Lads, I hit a woman. Good. In my car the other day. Oh, nice. No, no joke thing. I really did. So I was in the car park for Lidl, and I... It was uh, Millie, wasn't it? That's right. She's dead. You hit her. No. Um, what happened was, is no, that I, some guy in front of me started backing up. So then I had to quickly reverse, and I heard this, goom. <laughs> and um, uh, some woman came around to the front window. I was like, you just hit me with your car. And I was like, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And uh, that guy in front of me was reversing. She's like, I know. I'm about to have a word with him. And she went ahead and then started arguing with him through the window. And then I just drove around them and parked. What is this? I thought there was some cheeky punchline or something. No, it's just a real thing. I actually hit a woman in my car. What, a physical yeah. woman, not a car? Not yeah, a woman no, in a, a car. woman was for some reason in the car park walking in the middle of the road, and then I s- well, smashed into her. I'm really sorry that happened to you, but like... Harrison, that's a bit... Who, the old woman? That's a bit extreme. What's she doing walking in the middle of the road anyway, right? A, yeah. her fault. B, the guy in front of yeah. me started reversing. What am I going to do? Beep. Damage beep? My... Do you not beep? Of course I beat. But oh. he didn't stop. Yeah, but he just carried on. In addition to that, um, what, what would I rather damage? My car? Or a woman. Exactly. <laughs> that, that was the situation I was weighing up in my mind Nothing here. of value was lost. Except that poor woman's life when she died of her injuries later on. No, it was very, very slow. I was in a car park. It must have been like one mile an hour. You hit um, me with your car. <laughs> <laughs> but the noise it made was something else. Really? Yeah. Because it was. I, I, think, I think it might have been that she slapped the back of the car to warn me that I was crushing her slowly. <laughs> we started the podcast. Though. Shut up. <laughs> this is part of it. Sean, that's such a Sean, this is what. Sort of no, talk. this this is what we refer to in the industry as a cold open, Sean. Um, what it means is like it's a little bit that goes in before the intro. The sort of a funny story that you sort of just jump into. Oh, it was a funny story. It's yeah, it's a good, good cold open, I thought. It's kind of cold open has sort of uh, happened for like, most of the podcast Sean's, Sean's life. Na- yeah, 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 like yeah, that we've done all the time. It's a snappy joke, but like today it's... That was really snappy. No, it could just be an amusing story from one of the host's life. You see, what it does no, is... No, it was um, amusing. It, it was amusing. It was a roller coaster. I enjoyed it. It wasn't a roller coaster. It was in a car park. Yeah, for starters, you're not even listening. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and welcome to the 3T RPG podcast. My name is Harrison Blunt, and with me is James Clark. Riddle Muskiddle. And of course, what was that? I hit my chin on the DM screen. Okay, right. And of course, we got Sean Hunt. What's going on? It's Big Spliffy himself. Yeah. And um, this is an RPG podcast <laughs> all about tabletop RPGs. And today, we've got a fucking jam packed show today, James. You won't even know some of this, but. Oh, mate, I love jam. And I love packing. Mm, Fudge, fudge packing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Actually, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna be doing feedback, news punch, uh, where we talk about the news. We're gonna be do what you saying, where we talk about what we've been playing. And of course, Sean has got a new conspiracy corner for us. He texted me today saying, "Can I do conspiracy corner?" And I said, "Of course you can." Oh, better be good. And we got Dragon or Blagging, one of our uh, our regular items. So uh, we're gonna um, do Dragon or Blagging, Lord of the Rings, and then we're gonna go into your electro letters. Um, James, would you mind like lowering your expectations a bit? If that's Sean, right. you can't bring in the segment. And to be, be honest, that section, that segment, it's been so long since we've done it. Know, I'm yeah. excited as well, Sean. Right, cool. like, Sean I really right. am. We're pumped up. Oh, really... But let's do some feedback. The feedback side. It's the feedback side. Yes, bitch. The feedback side. Oh, feedback. It's the feedback section. Um, he says, uh, cheers for putting out a new episode. I listen to their shows at the gym, and I'm now noticing that me stopping going there correlates perfectly with you taking a hiatus from producing the show as regularly. Uh, that iron ain't going to pump itself, you know, bros. <laughs> so he listens to this to pump him up for the gym. That's fucking mental. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense yeah, at usually all. Usually it's the opposite, really, with RPGs and podcasts, really, isn't it? Actually, I've just realised why. We must irritate him so much. Because usually you listen to something that, like... He's on the treadmill, he listens to this, and he's like, that is fucking annoying, I'm going to go get him. And he starts running really fast. Yeah, or he's just like, oh, that's really pissed me off, these guys really anger me, I'm going to fucking... So you go to the gym, James, is that like a thing? Do you do anger anger gym? 
Like if you've had an argument with your wife because it's something you've done, let's be honest, you you are the one that's done it. I will tell you what, if you're pissed off, it really helps. <laughs> it genuinely helps. I bet it does. Also, I can sort of imagine uh, like James, you're like sort of sultry voice coming in, and then like me jumping in, and then he him, like him getting angry and just like going just going ham on the. Well, because like, he's listened to something fucking dumb you've said, and then he's just like he's uh, going. Uh, and he's like, ah, oh, Sean, ah, and then he does a new like personal best. Oh, I'm or glad I can inspire, you know. I don't think it's inspired. It's you do you really despire? Deeply anger. Yeah, you despire. Very anger. <laughs> but no, I don't. That's cool to know that you listen to it whilst at the gym. I hope it's. Uh, I hope it helps you out. But that is a bit fucking weird. No offense. No, that's cool. That's cool. Um, also, yeah. we we uh, we reviewed Wraith Thu, the goth RPG, in our last episode, right? Yeah, boy. And it was one of the dumbest, stupidest, <laughs> uh, sex crimey settings we've ever reviewed, right? We're talking about it was family friendly. Yeah, if that family is all Jimmy Savile and his mates. <laughs> um, but Sean, uh, did you know yeah. this bloke Alex O one three one three? He says what? Sean would love the visual novel ad- adaptation. <gasps> Wraith. Yeah, Sean. There's that a visual sounds, novel. That of sounds it. like you're excited about. He it. actually I'm is. It. I'm playing it, and now I'm going to review it. Well, here's the right, thing. You heard it here first. No, this is oh, this, right. this, probably a catch, though. No, 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 no. It's just no. You should play it. But I was just thinking. Because there, this is a little twist. We are going to be doing. You, you guys don't even know this. This is just in my head that this, uh, <laughs> this discussion has taken place. Cheers, mate. We're going to be doing some streams soon, and I'll, I'll, that will be more details in the next episode. But Sean, you should stream that and give your thoughts on it. As a, you've played thousands of visual novels. You should yeah, stream man. it. Oh yeah. But can, you should goff yourself up. Well, we, oh. oh yeah, definitely. Imagine that, just Sean being like, with like a full face of like kiss level makeup. Just playing that like, oh my game. god yeah yeah that'd be great Sean. so oh, rock and sad oh. we'll <laughs> <laughs> it's just right to itself really to be honest yeah, uh, right we're doing that James remember that because I won't Good. Yeah, yeah yeah I've remembered and uh, speaking of Wraith through Moonbeam he comes in and he says uh, <laughs> he says thoughts the burp was the most revolting thing I ever heard if you recall correctly on the last episode I burped midway through one of the bits I'd written down about Wraith through <laughs> And, and I was like, Bleh. just ignore it. And so, uh, in the setting, <laughs> it just got left in. He says it's worse than Daft Punk. Uh, it's not, yeah, it was a good burp. It was a good burp, man. Sean is known as Belch. Well, and also, if you were, he is, we call him Belch at a game because he's always doing it. And uh, to be honest, mm. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be honest, like, uh, that does make me a little bit of a hypocrite because I burped and recorded it. But Sean, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I, the way I, he I, got, I got so angry, I actually, and I haven't done this in years, but I got so angry, I actually punched Sean. Didn't I at the last game? Oh, that was, um, and it was accidentally really hard. I am sorry about that. Oh, it so made I such was, a cool sound. Look, though. and this is fucking weird, oh, and I was never even going to mention this on the podcast, but it's come up now, right? And this is fucking weird because Sean, you yes. let's be honest, right? You are weird. And what what he does, right, is he does these burps, but he manipulates it to make very strange sounds. One it's of like the noise I just made. Yeah, like that noise James it's just really did. So what he does is like he's about to burp, and he puts his head down. You know, like it's this. like he's trying to hide it's it. You know, like when you yeah, when you kind of trying right, to cough me, to the right, side. Sean, right, shut up! Me, right, don't start shut speaking up, over shut everyone. Up. Shut no. up! <laughs> let me explain. Shut up, bro. You don't need to explain. Yeah. yeah. So he he would tuck right, his listen. head into his shoulder and he would go, right, 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 listen, or something like that, no, right? Listen, and I... it, no, it is fucking weird. But no, I was walking past him and he did one right in my fucking face. Yeah. And I and I it was an accident. I just never do that. To be honest, I very rarely get so angry that I react in a physical way, but I just no, hit Sean, I punched no, you three I times, didn't, didn't I? I was like walking, like, I was just, like, I was just like, I couldn't help He was standing it. on his it's own, like, and I walked past him, and he went, Mew. It's like, imagine if you're out at a restaurant, to, and you're trying not to wait your son out. With my no, imagine, parents. imagine if you... That's not it, though, is it? Because why do you do it in other places, then? Yeah. What? No. No, but the way, the, another good way to no explain way. how he does it is, if you're eating hot food, and it's piping hot, and you're in a restaurant, and you're trying to cover your mouth, and blow it to the side, so you don't blow in front of the person you're opposite. It. it does it's kind of like that it's, but that's he, what a polite person would do yeah but know? that's what Sean that's what he looks like he's doing like go, <sighs> like to the yeah, side but, yeah, but what but he does is he, yeah, but, yeah, but, like no it, son it's Sean J- expression, but, wait a minute wait a minute no it's just yeah. occurred to me that he might be talking he might be talking about those clips that we played of you burping it yeah. was from the from the game where you ate where you drank that health water and uh that's another th- no, oh, yeah. we, no honestly because we record these so infrequently now right. there's so many fucking things I could, I could embarrass look, you it's with it's either no, you or you and no, I'm pointing wait. at both of these idiots no but wait I haven't done fucking I, I haven't done anything can I, can I have a can I, can I have a what can I have oh, a that. chance can I have a chance to explain 
about my burps. If it takes less so, than for 20 seconds, so go. This is definitely going to be a fucking so lie. we have a lot of snacks at the game, right? And um, not good enough. Yeah, so all of us burp, of yeah. Science. And none of us do it in that way, but carry on. Yeah, but like my burps are quite massive, and um, so I try and like make them less No, you can horrible. make it go... <sighs> Sean, you're not in a relationship at the moment, are you? Um, Never will be. What? Oh, I have you... <laughs> that's, that's a bit much. But, Sorry, uh... that that. You know, but my point is, my man. point is when you do these <laughs> fucking dangerously weird things... No, but like, I... that is the reason, though. Sorry. It the is reason. the reason. <laughs> Must be the reason. No, I don't go out, really. That's the reason. But my second point was um, embarrassing story about both of you. Wait a second. That right, 20 seconds are up. Right. Next session. Yep. Next right. session. Next um, session. Anyway, um, he continues to Moonbeam to talk about the uh, Wraith <laughs> the Wraith episode. He says, I fucking lost it. Uh, he's like a really fucking sexy slug. That was one of the quotes from the last episode. <laughs> so if you remember, she compared um, Wraith Thu to some animals that can sometimes change their gender, like slugs. And it was like, that is the lowest of the creature. The slug. Is the ugliest. Oh, mate, that's yeah, so gross. Yeah, slugs are nice. Have you ever trodden on a slug in your bare talk? foot? They're like peaceful and they just like go about their Have you ever trodden on a slug in your bare feet? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's a bit it's nasty. It's really bad. Yeah. Makes you that feel... is reason enough for them not to exist. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> anyway, uh, there was another thing that we talked about last uh, last recording session. He says, regarding I don't play d and I play Pathfinder, I think a close comparison would be I don't play retail World of Warcraft, I play WoW Classic. They're fundamentally the same game, but you're expressing a preference of taste with regards to how you engage with that game. And we were saying, you know, like that it was a bit like when people say, I don't play D&D, I play Pathfinder. It's like saying, I don't play D&D, I play D&D. But he is right. They are different, very different feeling games, the different versions of D&D that you can get. Like Path- is- Pathfinder and Fit 5e, though, I think, despite having some major rules differences, do feel roughly the same to play. Sort of, except Pathfinder is a bit more mathy. Yeah, 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 it is. Very, yeah, very much. A, much it's just more. kind of like the, a brand name, isn't it? It is, and but it's also like minor differences. It's like which version of the game do you prefer? But ultimately, yeah, I, I the thing is, if I sat down to play Pathfinder with a good GM who who like knows it, I think I'd still have fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And the same goes for Five E. I think it would be the same t- kind of fun. I think the bigger differences are from like early editions of D and D to ones we have now. It's the same with like old school RuneScape and regular RuneScape. You're gonna have probably fun playing both, but you know they're different. They're very different. For, I, actually, I think the the current RuneScape is way different though. Apart from the is world it? map having some superficial things, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. Mm. Um, that is it for feedback this time, um, Sean. Just James, can you just just bookmark if you can, soda water, and later oh, on we'll bring that yeah. up. Well, no, no, <laughs> later on we'll bring that up, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, because um, I don't want to just make the feedback all about ragging on you. James, also, could you bring? Like, Sorry, could you? I'm could you, can, can, could I'm, you? I'm busy. Yeah, could you? Like, Sean, this is could, bad no, podcast. No, no, listen, listen to because I want to hear. Get, give yeah. him the headline here. No, could you love pencil and uh, skateboard and prosecco? If that's right. Yeah, right. Fair enough. I won't mention the soda water. Thank you. Cheers. All right, no, I'm going to mention this. No, that no, that really is not good. Right, okay, forget it. All right, uh, let's do some news. I'm not going to mention the soda water, Sean. I'm not. Don't mention that story. Don't mention it. News. 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 Oh yeah, news punch. Goodman Games sells free stuff for ten dollars. Now we all remember, lads. We we all remember the shelf file of holding. That time, Goodman Games kickstarted a flimsy box made from sub cardboard material, and uh, Goodman Games are back with yet another cheap, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless product. And this product is the DCC character record folio, which is a folder and a character sheet. <laughs> Which costs ten dollars. Why? Yeah. No. Admittedly, right. It's a nice folder with a nice character sheet in, in it, and it excludes and it includes space for notes. Is it one use plastic, or is it like get wet and never use again cardboard? It is paper? get wet and never use again. But then I could just go and buy some A4 A4 uh, wallets and a Rick and Morty folder, and then I'd have like a nice folder and some A4 
Cheats. Well, yes, minus the Rick and Morty branding, but you go, you could also get this printed at your local printer for a fraction of the price um, and the same quality. Why yes, do they often sometimes turn into badminton games? I don't know. I don't know what it is, and it always seems to be around this time of the year. Or is it? Or is it for this sole reason? I, I think. Uh, and also, get this right. So you've got space for notes, right, and all of this stuff. But for the price of this product, you could grab yourself a nice notebook. Or print the sheets yourself and grab a pub lunch for the same amount. Oh, mate. See, doesn't that sound a lot nicer? Um, What's your theory on this, then, Sean? Uh, my theory on being Badman Games is basically they know that they've got some sort of people in their mid 40s who will spend a load of money on stuff and they don't really sort of try and create their own stuff and they won't think of it they want them to think of it and they can throw their money at it so okay so you're saying that these people wouldn't think to just get this shit printed the reference tables from dc and all that printed themselves yeah that's it yeah i mean my I would, theory is for exactly the reason we're discussing it bad press is good press right it's still press it must be. It's like, oh, these idiots are kickstarting no, no, this. No, when they do like a shit Christmas advert and everyone fucking hates it, but That's... they're talking about the brand. I think well, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because you, I think you're right, because it, cause they kickstarted a box, right? Yeah. And lots of people got mad, but lots of people were like, no, Goodman Games, they're the good guys. Look, I'm kickstarting it, and they almost did it in protest to the people that were complaining about yeah. it. So you're, you're probably right. It's because of their other products. They're like, well, who, what fucking mad cunt would sell this? And they're like, oh, that game sounds great. Other things you could get for a tenner. Ten, a ten dollar prostitute. So yeah, a pointless rubbish piece of crap, <laughs> uh, which to be fair has come out during a period where Goodman Games are making some genuinely good and innovative shit. So it's hard to be too mad. But this this is just road crew stuff. They're now palming off selling when it used to be free. Well, that's probably just it, right? Yeah, um, they got two. They got surplus products, and they, they should at least like bang it up for like three pound. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at least that, that would sell. That would really sell. Oops. And and the postage would be like nothing for them. So yeah. it's oh, it's fucking crazy. Uh, the next story is wizards wizard w- 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 wizards <laughs> wizards of the coast uses AI art. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've I've all seen, seen this. Yeah. We've all seen this. So recently, Wizards of the Coast released the book Big B presents the Glory of the Giants, and uh, people who pre-ordered it on D and D Beyond were allowed earlier drafts of the book. And one of the artists was a filthy robot lover called Ilya Shkipin, whose artwork was revealed to have been at least partially created by AI. Now, saying partially, right, we've seen the images, is very Ellen DeGeneres, right? Because what Ilya did was generate the images, then tidy them up using his art skills. Mm. That's what he used. I thought it was the other way around. That's much worse. You <laughs> thought that he drew them and then got AI to tidy them up? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, no, no, it is It is actually, it is that. And you can sort of tell a robot did most of them. I know you, you guys have seen the images. Yeah. Yeah. The left ones were the ones that were generated by the AI. Mm. But you can tell because it has like that, that AI quality of having a lot of nonsense details that aren't real things. Yeah, do you know what and, I mean? And, non, uh, and lack of uh, outlines as well. <laughs> So yeah, and that's what what the artists did is they yeah. added outlines, yeah, they added outlines that, and outlines some outlines and like extra details in places some alternate shading. But I would say extra details is even pushing it too far. Extra it, details is in outlines and some like scaly bits. Yeah, I mean it's fucking bad. It's bad, and it's a bad look for Wizards of the Coast. And this is probably why they should ha- have actual paid in-house artists. I don't know if that's a solution, but I mean. The, the more you have outside hires and you're hiring nobodies that you don't know, the more you're going to end up with crappy AI images because loads of people are doing it now. And I went on the Ilya Ship- Shkipin's website and from what I can tell, I no, in fact, I can't tell which ones are AI and which aren't because he says he makes art aided by AI. But you look at them and a lot of them, even the ones made with physical paint, like they appear to be generated to, to look like a painting. So I don't know. Um, anyway, Skippin, he did take to Twitter and defend himself, and he was p- completely open about his process, but then he deleted the tweet shortly after. Wizards did respond about the controversy and said they didn't know it was happening, which is likely because Sh- Skippin was a freelancer, but there we go. It still is a, kind of a shitty thing that Wizards are putting AI art in. Well, I mean, books. they're representing the brand, right? So it, uh, They should do their fucking it homework. still fall on them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same with anything. It's just like, oh, whoever's representing the brand that's meant to uphold, it's uh, it's going to be partially, at the very least, the brand's fault. Yeah, because... Oh, the, yeah, because they're the, not doing their due diligence. At, yeah. the, at the very least, you're not doing your research into the person. Eh? 
Hmm. Yeah, well, so, exactly. So, yeah. I think if they'd have taken a glance at his website, you, you can't tell like, oh, which is yeah, AI and which nah. not, so you would have sacked him off. But they just, maybe he sent them some examples, and then, I don't know, I don't know how it works, but the point is, is that, yeah, if they'd have done a bit of research, they would have known this guy was a filthy robot liker. So there we go. Um, that's it for news, but uh, Wizards of the Coast, suck a dick. And the other guy did truly artwork as well. You suck a dick. Should we get on to what we've been playing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of these. Oi. Yeah. What you slaying? All right, I can't. I can't let you have this ammunition, Sean. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell the oh, story. Wait. No, no, wait, don't. I, you don't. I've, I've, no, no, I can't I, let you have this one. No, to be to be honest, I, can't, I I feel a bit bad for bringing it like up. So you just you just go ahead with your bloody. Podcast, you your bloody podcast, whatever, whatever this is. <laughs> no, the other. I, I, all right, thank you for that. that. You know, you've demonstrated some kindness there. So I'm gonna, no, I'm no, gonna no, shelve really the soda nice water issue you. once and for all. Oh, but, but, but suffice it to say that I accused Sean of something. He, he fibbed a bit and he told me it didn't happen. And then at the pub, he finally admitted it at the bit about a week. I'm not gonna say what it was, Sean, no, no. but he finally admitted it about a week later. And he was, and he was like, all right. I did it. Are I'm you happy now? And then he and I was I'm like, yeah, Harrison's so happy in my life. <laughs> he was, he, he <laughs> literally pointed we, at me. He's like, look at you, look how happy you are. Even and I was we like, went to go to like to like EGX and like saw Cyberpunk, like like kind of. <laughs> that that was about a seven in terms of happiness, but this little victory that was a ten, man. <laughs> That's a ten. <laughs> it's so funny because you're going ham at him for ages about it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's rubbish podcasting. But anyway, what we've been saying, uh, let's talk about Fantasy Star, shall we? Yes. Who yeah. fired? No, no, it was a nice from elsewhere. Okay. It's probably that soda water. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to be asking that. Well, yeah, yeah. if we get enough people asking, then we're going to have to tell. Oh, we, yeah. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Ah, but that's no, we'll do it if we reach two million quid on P- Patreon. <laughs> um, so Fantasy, Patreon. Fantasy Star is a, uh, is a, it's a coming soon... Uh, product for old school essentials and I'm probably going to have to rename but we it's based on the fantasy star video games it's yeah, sci-fi man. fantasy who makes it who makes it Sega no I mean um, this this one oh right yeah oh, thank you oh, you, you see that's good that's good podcast yeah uh, yeah a little company called 3TRPG Publishing and uh, oh, right. written by uh, yours truly and you know a lot of people have looked at it and they have said, yeah, you are so the best. Yours truly is written yes. an awful lot of stuff. Like yes. <laughs> we want more. It's like those um, unknown artists. Does yeah. a lot of music, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Various mm. artists mm. do that too. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so yeah, we've been playing a sci-fi fantasy game set in a uh, military academy, is fair to say, isn't it? Yeah. And um, the whole plot of which, and we'll just probably talk about the most recent episode, but the whole plot of which is the that there was a student that used to go to the school who's turned bad, gained immense power, and is now trying to take revenge on the planet that these guys find themselves on, called Motavia. James is playing Rika, who is a... You are which class? P. P P P P Ranger. You're a ranger. Oh, class, but I'm a... What's the human... The you are a Newman. Newman. So he's a a Ranger Newman that was created in a lab, essentially. I'm technically, like two years old. In, yeah. In actual living years. But she looks fifteen. At Sean least. is uh, Sean's playing Chaz, the stoner, um, who is also a knight, and uh, we've got Alak, the cleric. Anyway, these guys have been doing various missions throughout the school and this, that, and the other, and uh, they essentially have found out about this guy called Falth, who used to be a student in the school, has now gained immense power and is coming back to destroy that, that planet. Now, these guys have, for one reason or another, been put in charge of a secret team that is supposed to be taking down Falth. So for, for many, many reasons that I won't get into, they're boring. Uh, the government can't really know that this student has gone buck wild. Mm. Um, so these guys have been put in charge of it. You three and a few other, I don't want to say friends, associates from the school as well. And um, yeah, we just got to the mission where these guys have, so they've been they, they've been trying to track down these items. One was called the Aero Prism, which reveals hidden objects because wherever Files was attacking from, it was somewhere in the sky, but it was hidden. So they got the Aero Prism. It's also this legendary sh- sword called a sealed on, which Sean now, well, it doesn't have, but we'll get to that. But you got that, 
and the idea was that then they needed to, to uncover Files' lair. They did that with the Aero Prism. Sean got the sword, and they needed to figure out where a spaceship was to go up and defeat Files. And they discovered that their school is actually a vessel that was used to port humans over to this planet a thousand years ago. So they fly up. They meet the big bad. He's turned. He turns into some fucking massive demon. Um, in fact, that session was pretty fun in general because they f- they were flying the ship and they had several challenges in the way. All they needed to do was get to Files' dark tower on this floating continent that was his evil lair, and hit it with the nuke that the ship came equipped with. Now, I guess somewhat sadly, but not that sadly, one of their associates had to end up riding on the nuke because the controls are a thousand years old and they were completely balked. So. He had to sort of steer it into Files. In doing so, blew up his force field, but suddenly all the power goes off, and their ship is now falling through space. They're surrounded by what is left of the floating continent, which is a bunch of rubble, and they're fighting on these falling bits of rubble, a falling spaceship, and Files has turned into a big fucking demon. Yep. Now, here's the weird thing. James's character, your character Rika, he's got the best magic item. I think you've had the biggest connection to this magic item that I've ever seen in a game. Yeah, because it's a, it's a cursed axe and I can't wield anything except the axe. It kind of speaks to me in the head and it's very bloodthirsty. Um, I'll play it up a bit because it's quite a fun character trait to have. Um, but as a result, I've managed to uh, sort of trap it in certain ways during battle and really cool actions because one of the cool tricks that you can do with it is uh you can freely summon it back into the hands so if you if you drop it as long as i can i can will it back into my hands so i've used that uh, so many times to sort of throw it arc it around a a foe and then wield it back through the foe for instance oh yeah. It's, yeah good shit amazing. just good shit all around and 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 that so it's become your sort of well, it's your main weapon because it's cursed. He can't wield any other weapon until the curse is removed. And even when they had to fight this um, this god basically to get the legendary sword that Chaz has, there was a point at the end where the god was like, "I shall remove the curse." And Rika was like, "No, don't, please don't." I was like, "Nah, it's all right. You're fine." And I had to do a con roll to, to convince. Yeah, charisma, but yeah, Sorry, yeah, charisma. that was great. And um, but yeah, so so throughout the course of and this has been really well played by you, James. But throughout the course of the campaign. Rika, your character's been getting sort of more in, in more influenced by the axe because yeah, you both yeah. live within the same head at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fight with the final bad guy starts. Now, I just want to be clear that this bad guy has an attack called Meteo, which it just crushes you with a meteor and it does d100 damage so it could be a tiny meteor could be a massive one but on average, a 50 damage meteor that, that's a one hit kill for anyone basically. The fight starts up, Sean's, Sean jumps out of the ship, he's jumping over all of these things, like attacking him with the sword, going fucking crazy. We've got Alak on the other side, he's he's healing people, he's hitting him with slingshots, smacking him with a mace, like flying through the air. James, as soon as the fight starts, the, the bad guy goes, such power, you must join me. And um, you were like, yeah, all right. And he's like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so he starts the fight, stood on the same floating rock as Files, and starts swinging his axe around his head like like it's it, going mental, going mental, like doing a sort of whirlwind, like like he's powering up for something. Yeah, I've thrown it around myself twice, yeah. so it's sort of like no, and and Sean, getting got, some really just, high velocity. It's just like crying shame, isn't it? I know why he did it, and it's great, but I don't know. No, you don't know why he did it. Though. I, I suspect why you did. Has it. he told you why he's doing it? Because I don't know why he's no, doing it. I don't it. know at the moment. He spent. I, I have a suspicion, and it's probably sick. But it's probably even sicker than I thought. But well, it's, it's a shame. Because, it's really sick because no. I'll be the only surviving party member with files. Uh, well, this is this, not, this, this is where it's going because I think I think James. Wait, is, just, wait, extra context just to point out to listeners at this moment is that what Harrison's done has been quite fair. He's got a list of magical abilities which files possesses, and Harrison's chosen to roll them at random. So he's got eight total abilities currently that he can use. And I thought, because some of the attacks are fucking cunty, like they will just destroy you. Um, like Meteo, for example. That was I, sort of like a sort of a large boss sort of mechanic. Like, yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, you know. He's it, enormously just... I mean, he's fucking... He's, he's huge. Colossal. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. The, the fucking... The, I rolled on round one, so James starts doing this. And I my suspicion, James, is that... And don't don't reveal it, but my suspicion is that you still are on the side of your teammates, and you're gearing up to do something cool. 
That's what I think, right? But round one, he cast Meteor, right? I rolled the baddest one. Um, everyone tries to jump out of the way. This fucking eighty-three damage meteor that comes through. <laughs> so fucking two people, two, like f- I think four people are still on the ship, and two people dive out of the way. So two of your colleagues. There was Waka and fuck. Who was the other one? There's this blitzball player and another one, right? It wasn't. Um, was it Grizzly? Yeah. Great. It was greasy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. So, so the, the, that fucking that meteor hits, and uh, first of all, your <laughs> ship is <laughs> the ship is absolutely it's just knocked out of the fight. That's that's it. Oh, I thought that was the way you were going to try and land safely was to jump back in the ship or whatever, or go and get the parachutes or something. But that's gone now because the meteor hit that directly, and it's out of the fucking. It, it's like it's two, several hundred feet below you, and two people instantly died. Two two colleagues that were helping you in the fight, fucking two of them jump out of the way. But then, that, so round one, we realise now this is serious business. This is fucking serious business. People can die like that. And then yeah. I go to chat. I get to James, and he goes, "Right, I'm going to continue doing the same thing, charging up. Right, I'm swinging my axe, throwing it in I'm a big arc, really and catching it." Really intimidating. I'm really intimidating. Right, but the other characters think that you're on the other side, so you're intimidating them. Uh, so, and that's working. So, like, um, because I can, he's, I could get out of the fight, but. I don't want to. If you've got like a plan for us, then I don't want to ruin that because I've got. An, yeah, but what happened to you, Sean? You crit failed using. Yeah, oh, no, this 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 was I the did. real this was the real fucker here, right? Because the thing is, the the false. The only reason he's able to use space magic, which is incredibly powerful, is because he has the gem of mundane, all right? Which is this. It's on the end of his staff. The reason the guys went to go and get a sealed on the legendary sword was because it can supposedly cut through anything, and the gem of mundane is supposedly um, uh, invulnerable, right? So they thought, well, if this sword can cut through anything, and it has a five and six chance of cutting through anything, it's yeah, pretty fucking high. Yeah, that's high. Yeah, but uh, it, but it wasn't it wasn't known to the players if it would work. It was just the best bet they had. So fucking Sean goes in and he's been rolling. I, I don't think I've ever seen you do more successes in a night that than that night. Like didn't fail a roll all night. Right. Then that first hit, he goes right. I, I smashed the gem of mundane with a sealed on. He gets a one. And then the sword breaks into eight pieces, or, scatters around the place like Dragon Ball Z. Into, oh yeah, I mean. When you say place, like that is quite broad, but like I don't. You even guys know are currently which part of the world, or if it's in the universe, it's spread or... out, mate. It went pew, pew. Yeah, like... they fell to they fell back to Motavia like uh, like stars, like shooting stars, and they are. You guys are very, very, very. You're just within orbit of the planet at this point, so very high up, and they've gone to very disparate parts of the land, where's, which is gutting. Where's Bulma at, man? Because you know, but um, like the other thing is, I don't want to ruin your plan. But I have an I have an escape pipe, which basically you, <gasps> you do have an escape pipe. He has an escape pipe, yeah. 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 So this is a this is an item from Fantasy Star. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but it's just it will teleport you back to the beginning of a dungeon, which I suppose will be the ship in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it teleports the party. Um, the way we we kind of talked of it is it's just a teleportation device. Well, but, there is a telepipe, but then there's an escape pipe. Which yeah, they're two. Tele- de- telepipe te- will teleport you back to a place that you once visited yeah um and you have had to have uh, been there physically it's but really, the esca pipe is yeah um, like I a, will, a quick I will, beginning of it. whatever dungeon that, you're in that was yeah. pretty sweet james about from like uh, escape pipe because it's like you say escape and pipe in the same yeah i know but yeah, it's es- written as esca pipe because it it's is, fun. i like saying esca pipe yeah, yeah, yeah esca pipe's great but um pablo esca pipe <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know, oh, you know, no, but, but the, the point I was trying to make, Sean, that was do, when that happened. So if you'd have popped off that attack, and this might be a spoiler for that in the campaign, but if you'd have popped off that attack and cut cut through it, it would have cut. It would. Cut. He had a fucking no. Yeah, he, he had, you you actually made him roll the the one in six chance, and he got six as well, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. So it was five and six. But sorry, the, yeah, the five and six, and he got the only number that meant he couldn't cut for any. And I'm like, look, you've just you've just smashed this sword against one of the most powerful items known to man, and rolled a one. Like, what do we do there? Do you know what I mean? But then it, also the thing is, is that um, yeah, so he would have lost his ability for space magic. So Meteo, he's now got that. It also spoiler alert would have halved his HP, and he's got loads post-apocalyptic story i I think that's where we're (laughs) heading isn't it but i i genuinely i'm at a point now where i was like i thought you guys had everything and you did have everything set up 
in such a fucking good way. Like, you really did. And you were smashing it the whole night. And then suddenly things just went terrible on the boss fight. And I'm, I genuinely do not know if you're going to survive. I also think that, James, you witnessed people dying that you've spent about a better part of a year in game with. And he's still swinging his axe around. And I was... Sean, do you reckon that's... A, I, I'm not saying it's a bad move. I don't know what you've got planned, James. But I'm just saying, is it out of order, Sean? Because he's left you and Alak in the lurch, one of your best fighters on the team, in the lurch for two rounds with a fucking demonic god. Is that out of order? It, it, I mean, I, I thought it was at first, but now I'm thinking like there's some sort of brilliant thing. But now am I out of order if you I, know, like, you if need I to like, sure. get on out of there? Get yeah. your estimations a little bit lower, you know? Um, well, I'm just going Sean, the, the only thing is. I'm only that, two, I want to see the world. Exactly. In fact, that was what the Eureka from the video games was like. Um, here's the thing, Sean. The fucking the escapipe will work on whoever's in the party. Yeah, that's just it. I think so that there has to be a range to it. Eureka is. I would consider by the user of the escapipe not to be in the party. No, right now. but that's the thing. So I don't want to leave you in the lurch in case. So you got to convince her to join the fucking party again and get back to Earth and try and find those bits, sword bits. Yeah. Because this guy's angry, man. Yeah, but surely he's just going to follow us and kill us anyway. He won't. I mean, they... they, they, they mm, yeah, yeah this, you can't they, tell us anything because we're playing it tomorrow. I can, yeah, we are. Uh, I can't tell you anything. And I have considered that. <laughs> and that is what <laughs> makes me worried. I've considered it for fucks. It's obvious that uh, you must have. Yeah, it's just like, well, what's he going to do? Well, you've got to hurry then, is well, the fucking answer. I, hope my, well, I don't hurry. have to hurry, they do. Good point. So we're now in a party split where Rika is not in the team anymore, but we are going to play it. So even if even if you have decided to completely join the bad guy, we're doing it. So, James, does that mean if we leave you, then that means your character's out of the games, therefore you haven't got a character? No, mate. Rika's going to... We're going to play... We're going to be simultaneously playing you, you, the good guys, and Rika. Yeah. She, he, she's going to be doing evil stuff for the dark I over. The, I think for the first time ever, we'd, if, if that happened and played if out If it that does, way, and James... Then we'd, we'll actually be playing uh, Goodbye Vert. Good guys versus bad guys, That'd and we've never done that. Now I don't know how we're gonna we're gonna sort of square that with being able to hear what the other party's doing, but we'll figure it out. Um, here's the dizzle, lads. Are we just um, have two separate rooms. No, uh, just two separate. I'll just run campaigns. between them. It'll be like a fucking forty towers episode. It's literally like two separate campaigns, isn't it? It would. Be. I mean, it really, literally. Maybe you will just have to roll a new character. Maybe you can play Zan. For no, those I'll that be... don't know, Zan is a bit of a meme character that's uh, at their school. He, they t- they became attached to him because of some fucking stupid circumstance. They were saving some stu- some students have been being kidnapped by files and tortured in such hideous ways that they've gone been turned. Yeah, they've been turned into forged ones, which are like zombies uh, that kill mindlessly. And also, they've been uh, some of them that have survived the torturing process have gone completely mad. And there's this one bloke called Zan, who the only thing now he can say is yum. Yum. It's based on a meme of a bloke who. Did some work for AVGN. Fucking look up. It's funny. Uh, Justin Silverman. He's my favourite meme at the moment. He once wore bags on his feet. So um, that is it for Fantasy Star. We're, we're, hopefully we're going to get to... Yeah, I mean, I'm fucking worried. I don't even know what... I've, I've written my notes for next game and it's just a question mark on the page. It's not uh, dead in capital. D- dead? Question mark? <laughs> Dead? Question mark in in, uh, in pencil so you can rub it out. Just another little incident I wanted to talk about uh, is... Pete, you and listeners, you at home will sympathise with this. I've had a lot of players in my games over the years, uh, mainly the same ones. Um, but uh, you know, with with character sheets, right? Sometimes you get to a point where you look at somebody's character sheet and you go, "This is not fit for purpose." And I will often rewrite it, right? And James is giving Sean a look here because we we were saying. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Ryan. No, I'm talking about you. He was bad, but you're bad. Um, there was a point where we were trying to figure out who has what and we were trying to sell shit, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And Sean there, was, Sean, there was a point where you, 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 I remember Sean was talking to, talking to uh, your character Chaz was talking to Alak, the cleric, and you're going, do you want an egg? Do you want an egg? Like that. And um, yeah, and, and I, oh, somebody pointed out, Sean, you don't have any eggs. Yeah, I you have me- five eggs. I've got five eggs, fam. You've got five eggs now. You, right, at the time, you didn't have any fucking eggs, right? <laughs> because we all remember you using them in a certain way, right? Sean went, all right, I'll just take those off. Uh, hang on a minute. What are steggings? <laughs> <laughs> steggings. Right. And, right. right. was- and it turns, it's, it's Sean looking at his writing, he'd written five times eggs, but to him, it looked like steggings. The fuck is this? What's wrong with you? Well, Your well, handwriting is so bad, you can't even understand it. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Is it, um, we told the story about when really... Sean 
Uh, since... Convinced JT to give him his mono mate, which is a healing. Oh, potion. yeah, that was another one. We got a cleric on the team. <laughs> we have for those, got a lot that, for to those catch that, up on now. For those, yeah, we really have. Fucking hell. But for those that uh, don't play uh, old school D and D, clerics they've got a hard time with it, right? I mean, it's fucking. They don't. They don't even get spells till level two, and then it, even then they only get one. And he had cure light wounds, and. Um, <laughs> He used his one spell a day on Chaz, who had been absolutely fucked. And then Sean was... After the battle, Sean was looking at his stuff, and he, he turns to... He, Mono Mate is a healing item in Fantasy Star. And he turns to the cleric and goes, Do you want a Mono Mate, man? And he's like, What? You had a Mono Mate the whole time? <laughs> I used my one slot on you? It really added to our characters. Though. I know it did. It did. It, it did, but, but I know... Unintentionally. I know that your character's a bit airheaded, but that was yeah. that was not that intentional. That was real-life airhead. No, the, 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 that wasn't intentional. The move Because he asked you, like he was like, do you have any monomates? You said no, and he used yeah. the spell slot on you. But then it was when we were looking at our character sheets to sell some shit off, it was like, oh... Oh, I've got a monomate. Do you want a monomate? <laughs> Do you want a monomate? Because <laughs> he, he I'm was... A monomate I... and a diamate, which is the higher of healing. This is it. You fucking... I know, oh, die and try. And the yeah. funny thing is as well is that like... Um, is that I think it was during the point where the cleric was complaining about having used his spell slot on you because he was battered and you were like, Do you want a monomate? Yeah, he was really <laughs> fucked. And then you just <laughs> had to feed like, him. And of course, the fucking monomates, it, yeah. monomates are good, but it's better to save the healing spell for in a battle and he had to use it out oh, yeah, of battle on you. Yeah, that's kind of him. Uh, talk your shit out, mate. <laughs> sort it out. Sort <laughs> it out. Sort your sheet out. Fantasy, sort your sheet out, mate. Fantasy it's star. It's a piece of sheet. <laughs> or yet to be fully named, coming to a, to a DTRPG I might near you. Yeah, oh, it's coming soon. Because this is the playtest, officially. But yeah. um, <laughs> I might just call it Star Fantasy. That works. Yeah. Take that. Sega's lawyers can't afford anything at the moment. The creator of Sonic is in jail. <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's like <laughs> he's got a very hefty lawsuit to deal with. Well, they're not Nintendo, so they might there's a fifty fifty chance they'll come after you. They'll break him out. Do you know what's funny though? Do you know what's funny? Did you hear that I, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was the one like the president of Sega of Japan, right? Said that he he wanted Sega he wanted Sonic to outdo Mario. Can you believe what? that? Uh, I heard rumours of that, but I didn't know it was No, true. he absolutely said it. And he said, um, one of the quotes was, um, it was something like, "We want to, Sonic was originally made to compete with Mario. We still haven't achieved that. It's like, so it's never com- competed with Mario. Uh, Ma- Mario has been world famous since 1983, sorry. And Sonic is Sonic sucks at such no, dick. but like there's two it's fucking there's, right. no there's quite there's, there's no video game podcast just carry on oh yeah you're right <laughs> um, right <laughs> let's right. get into the main subject then how to run an RPG set in a school main subject ma- ma- magic main subject Tokyo main subject a lot of people want to run RPGs say in a school right now in fact I've seen some of my friends on Facebook they've done it because and let's just call it what it is because of Harry Potter because of Harry Potter and of course a lot of anime sort of leans in that direction as well because they're all set in schools and they're all fucking lame about these feelings and shit oh my god why do you like how many cans of worms do you want to open today right okay here we go Sonic's rubbish anime sucks uh, that video game you like crap uh, I haven't watched a good film since about 2001 right I have uh, Mad Max, not very good at all. Especially Fury Road, that's the worst one. Uh, and oh, wait, uh, what's all this? I thought it was your favourites. No, no, Fury Road is like the best film ever made. Right. But oh, the other one, I thought you, I thought you just gone super that's crazy. No, I know I've been watching some anime recently. No, I'm just going to try and piss as many people off. We like we said Goodman Games. Oh yeah, that's it's good press. Fuck all the people. And the shall we, people. shall we pick the best? Now, I'm not just going to say this, but the best ethnicity. Because that will be controversial and it will get us a lot of listeners. Whites. No, I don't think whites are the best. Um, French. They have the most access to things. <laughs> French for choice. No, let's cut this out. But French is a bad choice, though, isn't it? That's, that's one of the worst it's ones. Really it's fine for us to say that because we're British and there's really like we history can't... there. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> that, no he's racist. He's racist. I'm is sorry. It? Oh, no. But the worst one, objectively, is Portuguese. Right, so. Um, Shut up. All right, no, that's it. Well, that's all getting cut. That's getting cut. Sorry, yeah, Sean. Sorry, cut. I didn't mean to offend yeah. you. Just to let you know, though, listeners, we are foreign, aren't we, Sean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess. Oh, kurva. Yeah. Well, so technically, if you want us to wash your car, we'll do a bad job and complain about it. And if you nice. want chili sauce with that, then see. Maybe. Now we've been racist against ourselves, so we can have a go at the other ones. But they'll clean your windows really badly. Where's this, oh, all, le- where's this all leading to, though? 
schools RPGs, of course. Yeah, and egg fried rice. Um, Thought I'd join in on the other. Right, I'm just going to start this whole. Main subject. So look, a lot of people they want to run uh, RPGs based in schools. And uh, I think Harry Potter is very much to blame for that, and also, of course, a lot of animes, which are great, uh, and I love them. So the point. <laughs> That's good. It's a lot of a uh, lot of mainstream kind of TV. A lot of media is set in a school. Yeah. I mean, even like obviously Stranger Things is 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 another one. Uh, Naruto. Harry... The Ruto, like, good even, example. And like, I only know it's only brought to the front of my attention because I heard it on like a radio somewhere. But the the, the Thunder Games is uh, something that's fairly schoolish. I don't even know what it is. Is it like Squid it? Game? No, no Hunger, Hunger Games that they just ripped. Oh, Hunger off. Games. Oh, but ripped off Battle Royale, aren't it? And but you called it Thunder Games. Yeah, just to kind of annoy people who. Oh, like I it. thought that was just a new thing. No, yeah. okay. Yeah, hung- well, it's not really, though, is it? It's just teenagers killing each other. Yeah, but, but it was a bit schooly because all the factions in it. I suppose. It was quite schooly, to be fair. Uh, but anyway, I, and I've seen I've got Facebook friends and things like this. I've seen running Harry Potter RPGs, and I I genuinely think I genuinely think from what I've heard, doing it really badly. Right? I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not the you know the world's authority on this, but I think today we're going to discuss uh, how to run an RPG set in a school to achieve that Harry Potter or uh, anime work life balance type feel. Right? Like a Persona game. Okay. That's Harry- what we're going to discuss today. And uh, it's going to be great, isn't it? Hurry up, Potter. All mission clear. I'll put that in as a jingle, Sean. Thank, Thank you. you for reminding me of that. Nice. Um, right, so uh, first of all, I just wanted to talk about some of the themes present in school-based media. We can go through them and we can try and figure out how to do them in your game. I'll, prob- I'll also probably talk about the campaign we're running at the moment because it's set in a school and I've done a few systemic type things to try and make it work. But first of all, let's talk about themes and how you can sort of get these across. Um, first of all, I think one of the biggest ones that you're going to see in like Harry Potter, anime, karate, is going to be um, identity and self-discovery. It's all yeah. uh, characters that evolve and discover themselves as people, right? Um, of course, that's fairly easy to do over the course of a campaign as a character um, because you're reacting to the things around you. And if you change, then you're doing it right, right? Discovering yourself, seeing seeing what the character becomes at the end, as opposed to what they started at, it's kind of easy. But what do you think people can do to uh, encourage that as a GM? Do you think do you know exactly what you're doing? Which is, I think, what you're going to lead on to as a point is that we've got NPCs which we're, um, you know, uh, interacting with, and they are also changing throughout um, our time there at the school. That's a fair point. Yeah, I hadn't are, thought yeah. about that. Ah, oh, you hadn't thought about it. Well, there you go. Here's a good GM tip that you're doing uh, without knowing. No, I'm not saying, oh, oh yeah, just just did that one casually. It wasn't, no, but I hadn't thought about that as encouraging that specific type of play. Oh, yeah. I was just doing it because I thought it made the school seem interesting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it definitely does help. Um, Do you yeah. Know, uh, another one uh, that, you, that uh, is good is routine and stuff in, in, in it. So in your one, you've got like the lessons and then you've got home time and like the weekend and stuff. Uh, it make, um, well I'll get to this in terms of the mechanics the later but it does mean yeah because we got the routine um, and there is a random event thing that can happen at school there are p- parts in which you are you're interacting with the environment around you it's not just go. it's not just like well, it's not as mundane as playing out every single minute you're at school yeah. but it's also like here's the main event that happened this day and you, you have something that will help your character to evolve identify themselves and, and, and discover new parts about themselves um, because you're interacting with things I mean a good example there was one where you were walking it was just a, I've got a D50 table and one of them is the popular crew uh, marching towards you. You know, like that shot you see in, in every... Like, sex education is a good one as well. And mm. I feel like that shot where people are walking in a cool manner down the hallway and people are moving out the way. Yeah. Like, that happens a lot. Yeah. And uh, that was the encounter that you guys had, was that that was happening. It was Floella, who's the popular girl, and her mate, sort of her entourage all behind the her. All plastics all together. Exactly. Um, and they're walking towards you, and I'm like, I just say to these guys, how do you react? And it's like... So shit, shitty things happening to you by shitty people. That's definitely one of the things. You... It's got to be right because yeah. I think they're under pressure. That that people that that's how they do uh, develop, and you see parts of them. That's it. Yeah. But I think all of these things. Yeah, and I, I think like like you say, with the NPCs changing around you. I guess it kind of encourages people to do the same, and I guess your characters 
this is going to be a longer campaign so i guess the characters are evolving uh you know day by day and we'll see we're seeing sort of flashes of that all over the place like i mean we even see Chaz is your character Sean, i think is very lazy but i feel like there are points now where you realize that one but when it comes down to it he's not lazy if it's important he's not lazy oh definitely like he's um he'll he'll like jump into the fight to protect his friends you know but until then he's very aloof and stuff like that that solely doesn't give a fuck like turns up at other people's classes things like this I don't know, it's, it's not that he doesn't care or anything no no I he think does. he cares a lot I, do, yeah. I just think that we've seen that evolution and Rika of course you with the axe as well and mm. like we'll, I often will cut to scenes where you're alone with it and you're just talking to it like, I'll be like you wake up in the morning what, what are you doing at this time and you're just you're just talking and he's playing the axe himself as well by the way even though it's technically an NPC so it's, we get a lot of conversations with James role playing with himself which is just the best but yeah, they're all... quite, they're, fortunately they're short I don't hug the limelight in that sense but they're, they're then, just a kind of character building oh no they're really great enjoyable. it's great there's, um, there's another thing as well is the fact that uh, this happens in school as well but we're all thrust together to do these missions but now I mean well, well I think at least my character Chaz definitely considers both of your characters friends well it's like when you're forced into a, a group in a class and then you're stuck with that group for the rest of the term but that's, somehow that's you, the situation we're in my, yeah, you, somehow you, been, you yeah. kind of you learn you find common ground don't you yeah. in fact that is, some, that is something I haven't put on the themes here but we should add that I think it's the um, groups of Camaraderie. Yeah, because Hermione, Ron, and Harry are they're all very different people. Yeah, right. And in fact, were... Hermione didn't like them at first. No. But then she gets down and dirty with Ron. Oh yeah. But you know me, I like to watch those films in reverse order so that Hermione gets sexier as they go along. Not me. <sighs> Not Hermione. Yo. <laughs> Sorry for the paedophile joke there. But yeah, Sean, good point. Um being thrust together with people that you don't I mean, I've got so many memories of school that are like that. But then it's then putting that energy into situations that are high pressure the next theme i was going to talk about is ambition and temptation so often i don't know if this is specific maybe just harry potter but uh, school-based media you tend to see that the, the, there are kids who uh, the, the or the students they want to do they want to they strive for greatness in one way or another right even if you look at that uh, average anime uh, your lion april now the whole side story about the guy who was into a football career right as football a, so you got, everyone's got their ambitions, but the temptation, the dark side, is always there, right? Like it's like Voldemort, right? Living in his army must be better than having your school attacked every five minutes. But there is also a price to pay for doing evil stuff, and I think ambition and temptation are other themes of yeah. these types of things. Yes. Yeah, but Rick is slowly learning that Voldemort side's sick, mate. Uh, well, that's what—that's the vibe I'm getting here. You got, he's, she's going evil, but that—that that fits into the theme. I don't know, really. Really, that's a story thing, isn't it? The, the GM yeah. needs to add in, but to add the ambition thing, I think, is no. It really helps to understand. Well, it's, it's like so. What what um, Harrison did sort of when we did character build is like try and choose a profession or uh, a subject that you want to uh, pres- pursue, and then that's kind of uh, should build part to what your character. Uh, yeah, because these their ambition is so mine's very learning about like history, English, the world, science, all this kind of stuff where I want knowledge and a lot of it. And then we've got JT who's like, yeah, Warhammer Club because it's fucking. Yeah, I think having the clubs and classes that these guys can pick. So they picked one major a profession and a club. And yeah. Jack Sean didn't pick a club. He's his ambition He's a weed is gaming. Though. Um, but uh, no Chaz I mean but anyway the point is the, yeah ambition and temptation I'm not really sure how necessarily how to do that as a GM but like you said like I think that's baked into RPGs but maybe having those I think you've got to have lessons haven't you to, it helps because, focus yeah, yeah. of the character that's kind of I know the ambition part of it comes more towards like you know killing the evil or whatever but it's also the school setting should be about learning and getting better, right? In, as to a certain extent, and I think that having every single day in the game, these guys are doing classes. We do the whole week, and they do classes, clubs, all of this stuff, and it's going to give them gives them bonuses that they can then keep if they pass exams. But also, they've got these. Um, it gives them uh, inspiration, and so in a sense, it's sort of that that just 
adds in and bakes in a little bit more of that ambition because every single time we play, you guys are attending classes and it's getting your characters are getting better every single day. And I think that's something that the Harry Potter free tabletop RPG did really well because you're constantly working towards getting better and better. It's not just yeah. when the level up time comes. And I think maybe Savage Worlds would do that really well as well because you level up fairly often. But I think the the uh, the amb- ambition. But I also think temptation part of it. I guess you've got uh, having an evil villain is a big theme in these things, isn't it? And yeah. having that thing offer immense power at the cost of being good maybe is a good also thing. Also, I think it's good. I don't know if it's going to play into some other sort of areas of discussion, but I like the fact that within the setting that uh, we're playing for at the moment, there's um, quite good limitations. So, like you you pick in your uh, classes, subjects, professions, uh, and clubs, uh, subject, profession. Um, but you can only choose one. You can only do that one for the term. You have to uh, you have to roll at a certain point in the week that I'm sure you'll get onto in a bit to see how well you do at each one of those. But that's very um, sort of structured in that sense and limited because you can't just be like, well, because of the fact that I have this club, I should immediately be able to do everything associated with it it's like no you have the ability to give yourself a plus one because you're doing it and then etc etc so it's it's really good limitations to that i think that's good and i think yeah i i I agree and i think that it's it's generally got to it's a kind of cool system that i might just include randomly in the back of the book but um yeah ambition temptation much more of a story one the last one obviously and this is obvious friendship and loyalty Mm. is another big thing because you see like in Harry Potter when Ron goes mental because he thinks Harry's cucked him like a <laughs> m- like a cuck lord and, he, and he, he's just like I'm your best friend and all this shit like you need to have that there and I think I think specifically what Sean was saying friendship with people that are unlikely is a big is a big one and a lot of the it doesn't necessarily have to be just with the players because Sean you can weigh in on this but Persona 4 for example you're constantly spending time, not just you, well, your character is spending time with NPCs. Are you alright over there? What's going on? I think he's trying not to burp. Yeah. I Cheers. Burp, really, shouldn't I? No. no. It would have like, wasted less time. <clears throat> but Persona 4, um, you're spending time with the NPCs quite a lot and getting to know them and stuff like this. So on my random list of school encounters, uh, and, and this doesn't have to be the way you do it, but I think friendship and loyalty is the big thing and so on my random encounters list I've got some that are just uh, a friend invites you to get a beef bowl after school yeah. a friend invites you to walk home, home with them well there's a situation yeah. where a friend is in getting embarrassed and you have the choice whether or not to step in and help or not yeah exactly yeah. and if you succeed in what you were trying to do in that scene you're going to get inspiration so it's like I think you need those heartwarming moments at school in, in, in these sort of things and it with the friendship and like the beef bowls and that absolutely well, that gets you the uh, the the, uh, the stuff that happened at school angle of the of, of it all because then yeah, it's like oh you're going out to uh, uh, a, a frat party or whatever it's uh, termed as and, and yeah. people are joining in on the school campus doing this that and the other and it's a chance for your character to grow as well and, and the group your party absolutely I mean we had uh, somebody had the beef bowl example and he went out with the leader of the Warhammer club and they spoke about girls and it yeah. just sort of brought them closer together also, but it was a like nice it, little moment it's also uh, re-centres your character a bit because for instance um, like having those social situations yeah, yeah. because like so what what's happened in the way that the system's played out is during the week is lessons and then on the Friday we get an assignment then on Saturday and Sunday we can choose to do club activities or other stuff so most of what we're actually playing through um, happens on the Friday and the weekend mm-hmm. because that's the, the, the big part it's, of m- it's mission time assignment yeah. time yeah so um, obviously they can sort of play out for a good few in-game sessions and stuff and then we get back to it and it's like right you're back in school here's a random encounter and it regrounds you as I'm a, I'm a kid at a school I'm not this heroic person who's just done this crazy stuff and it's it, a good it point. puts you back in position of I've got to do my lessons kind of sort of it's like I think situation. I think maybe that, that adds into it doesn't it the school yeah. feel is like that dichotomy of things you think are really important versus like either nice moments with your mates at school or things that are genuinely annoying but like yeah. that school life balance type thing I don't thing. know where um, yeah. you sort of if it's borrowed or uh, taken or you thought it up but the system 
that you're sm- using for sm- the lessons sm- from Persona. The lesson system. Yeah. Oh, in Persona, you get an extra D six in that. Um, nice. No, but like like the whole framing of the lessons. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like like I want uh, the the yeah the feel yeah, I was but, going for was exactly from Persona. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so you're taking that, which is great. But I feel like at the table playing through it, considering I've never played Persona, um, it's I like how you you play it out because you get to well, this well, sort of the, this sort of air quotes admin section. But it's still entertaining because you have to roll to see how well you did in your certain lessons. Well, and also inspiration yeah. is like that it carries a little weight. It does, and getting to more of that is always good. Yeah. But then also the amount of lessons that you succeeded in is going to help you with your exams, and then you can unlock the bonuses from your clubs permanently. And uh, mechanics and those will exams come later. Are but what do you think? Your level ups. What do you think people can be doing? Better, like like for for the friendship and loyalty thing because I think you guys have always been really good at it where to where your characters don't warm to each other immediately but they do it gradually. Do you have any other tips for like that? But making a convincing friendship as this is probably one of the most major parts of the school thing. To be uh, fair, like with all with all that stuff, it sort of it does almost like a lot a lot of the time it's, it'll probably just come organically. To be fair, isn't it? I agree. Now I'm not, I don't mean to suck you guys off or anything, but the thing is, the the um, he does. I do not. I hate you. Um, but the thing is, I've I've played in I've played in some groups for long campaigns, right? Where the characters over the course of it never gelled, never gelled. Like it always felt as players, we ended up gelling and we we had a common goal in mind, but well, our characters never ever felt like friends. And I don't think that's I don't think that's that you guys. Do it by do, accident. Do you reckon it's because we're a bit more normal than other people? Then? We're not normal. Um, no, because I, I. No, I mean we're not normal, <laughs> but we can interact with people, innit? No, no you I, guys can. You no, can't stand behind you, and I won't get. No, like, I don't yeah. think it's got anything to do with that. I think it's how we've learnt to play over the course of time, and also, yeah, um, at least with our um, our table presence and our group that we play with, we have found quite a good sort of accidental hierarchy. At least for a few sessions. Although this time it's not happening, which is really good to see. I think it's because you guys are more more equal. But you you the hierarchy in this particular group of characters changes depending on situations. Mm. But the it's thing quite, is, it's, it's really shared in this sense. Because you know, of, like of the uh, the playground, so to speak. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely, because it depends on where you are in a social shit, shit, shit in a social situation. <laughs> I would say that Chaz is the most personable. But in, say, for example, a very analytical situation, Alak the cleric is is yeah. the guy who's he's the authority, and I think that Rika, uh, above all else, is very good at um, negotiating and mm. things like this. And it depends on where you are. But it's like we we have had, and I I genuinely think this is how you guys do it, and you don't even know how that you're doing it, or us as a group is because. When it comes down to creating a convincing friendship, it has to come naturally. But the way that we do it, you know how like when you create a D and D group and somebody will play a character that feels like somebody go or he he'll sit down at the table and go, what should I play? And they go, oh, I want to play. Uh, we we need you to play a cleric, so they pick up a cleric, right? Yeah. It's a bit like that in terms of. I think it almost starts off with somebody's got a really good idea for a character. Somebody else will then go, well, how can my character serve that character? Not not like out loud, but do you know what I mean? It's like, well, where could I fit in with that dynamic? Yeah, and you guys yeah, then slot yeah. in. It's like the characters in your Pathfinder campaign, for example. James's character, w- without a doubt, was the leader, right? So then, But then I was literally his servant for a part of it, right? And, <laughs> and so that's that's where I fit in. I'm the help guy. I'm the, I help the people. Um, and, and like that that's my character's personality, right? But then we also had the other character. It's like, well, those two are so clearly closely linked. So he, his character became kind of an outsider. And then we have a, we, then we had a relationship there. Do you know what I mean? Like, we gradually got to know Henu over the period, that wizard who was an outsider. I think we, we, we try and make decent characters, though, don't we? Make, we try and make a good story. But I think we do it with Eden, uh, and this is like, oh, it's just coming across as boasting right now, but I think it is good advice to try and make a character whose personality fits in some way, right? But also, don't just go full bore ahead with the character idea you yeah. had because you think it's cool. And also, like, think about that's, the situation of the, the school classroom when you're forced into a group, and so you have to get along. Think of it like that. It's like... We were when we started off in the the school grounds, and then we we're all separate, and then we were at uh, the uh, uh, the bar, whatever it was at the school, joining in and drinking like 
soft drinks and that. And that was sort of like some of the introductionary phase of it. So we really weren't talking much because there was with the wheels loads of NPCs around us, and um, we seemingly didn't really get on. Um, I feel like uh, all of our personalities were significantly well, not significantly, but a lot different to what they've become now. And it's like so, Sean and JT's character ended up sleeping in the same dorm together so their friendship was going to grow quicker because of proximity because yeah. of proximity whereas um i was like with someone else and it's quite funny because they're an npc there is there is less of um oh sorry there was because they're rap in peace yeah, but there right. was less of a connection there but there was still a, a subterranean level of respect yeah it was sort certain. of a, it was a su- it was a sub thing i mean that that's that's all it needed to be i mean yeah. that's enhancing those things of friendship i've tried to add in npcs that i think your characters will find likable um and Sometimes Artorius, uh, well, Artorius <laughs> was James's roommate, and he was supposed. I literally put him in because I was rewatching Game of Thrones, and he was based on Joffrey. And ah. I was, I was literally just like, because Joffrey always defers to his dad, but actually hates him, and it's like, it's like all these, and he's a little whiny cunt. And I was just like, I think it'd be funny uh, that when I started the game, uh, those those of you listening, when I started the game, I just said, right, two of you are going to be in the same dorm, one of you is going to be with a stranger. Who wants to go with who? And we had this hilarious scene of Sean and the cleric realizing that they're in the room together after meeting earlier and hating each other, and they were yeah. both, and, they, and they sort of were arguing, and they were like, "Right, goodbye," and then they both started walking in the same direction. They were like, <laughs> started speeding that was up. Funny. So why are you following me? Stop walking beside me. And so, yeah, 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 that was so good. But that's also knowing that you can play on jokes like that because of the setting, because it's based in the school. It's going to be like, right, you know, Harrison made sure to prep us in the way of right think Harry Potter think of uh, any kind of anime that's got any kind of school tro- trope them. that you could that's think of um, and play up to it because it's, it's, it's those situations are going to be fun while the overarching story is really fucking deep and dark the school uh, time and interaction there like can be as stupid as we like well, and that's the what often a... stench of the light stench or maybe heavy of uncomfortableness the whole way uh, like like with the dorm room yeah oh there's a lot yeah. of it there's a yeah. lot of it and, and also like um, that, that's the thing that people like see uh, with the later films as an exception the thing that people like about Harry Potter right often is is that it's, it's comfort food, isn't it? Yeah. Even though the films they 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 have some pretty significant plot holes, it's like it's comfort food. It's it's like when you see them in the big hall and they're eating a yeah. dinner and it's all and that's weird. the light-hearted fun time, isn't it? What and is when, he drinking? Oh, well, I'm sure as hell it's not pumpkin juice. <laughs> when you get to the end as well, you feel like you're in that friend group. Uh, yeah, like it's that peaceful yeah. feeling. I, I yeah. don't know, and I think I think yeah, in uh, I think finding a place where you guys. Where where you your characters slot into each other, even if they are completely different, is the best way to but enhance so, yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah. It's also to know aspect. that, like you as a player in that environment, you really should uh, learn to accept that that's the position you're in. You're saying you've been in, in some campaigns that have long run in, and I don't think any player at that table accepted it because they were just like, "Well, no, I'm better than that person, so I'm never going to get on with them." It, it was Whereas it was like, all no, I'm the main character. Yeah, you've got the bloody camaraderie of it all so you all have to work together to, for that one purpose it doesn't matter what film or what situation you're in real life or fake those people will always connect in some way or another even if it's slight and yeah we, like, we know that for, for well yeah. like I, I remember now this is not going to mean anything to anyone but uh, what the fuck was her name you know what was that the girl that we went to school with Rachel something and she had a huge mouth the what, biggest mouth what, Bex thing. yeah her that'll do yeah and Lauren, yes, right. I was in a science group with both of them, and it was the funnest one ever. Because, but, and you would never think those two would get on, but they were the best of friends, and it was great. Oh, I just realised she looked like the Attack Titan. Oh, she does. Oh, that's grim. J- just to let you know, just so you know, she, she. Okay, if I'm going to give some archetypes, she was literally like Neil from the Young Ones, and she was. <laughs> let's just be honest, mega chav, right? Biggest chav ever. She did hairdressing at college. Oh yeah, what, wait, Lauren, yeah. Yeah, Lauren, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there was me, who was like a, you know, a new metal kid. But the three of us somehow found common ground because we were stuck in a science group together. But I think, yeah, you're right, James. Players have to lean into it, don't they? You have to lean into it. You that. have to accept it. Like you can't just be a cunt for the whole thing. And like I hate it when people do that. Like, I'm a barbarian, so I'm dumb. It's like, oh, come on, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. just dumb. 
but like, also there's a lot more depth. But it's also character. playing that that uh, uh, dark loner, right? Yeah. Just forget that. Don't do that in one of these settings because well, you've got everyone... to be somebody's friend. That's well, part of li- it. Actually, so, if you individually look at all of us, we're all the dark loners. But we've... all the characters. Yeah, if you actually yeah, look so. at us individually, we literally are. Yeah, but um, yeah, we are. We're, we're all like from socially outcast groups, but also um, the fact is that everyone tries to be a main character so your group like you're saying James you're a group and you have to get through this shit you know what I'm saying so yeah the group is the main character no mm. individual character is and you've got to play your character as such yeah, yeah. fair enough well that's pretty fucking good well, we've you only could got say the school is the main character <laughs> <laughs> no it really isn't in this case <laughs> um, I just want to point out um, one last thing I did is that, is that this is a, a theme in stories that tend to involve children in the first place is a lack of adults right because it, it but, but it means there's good, okay, there's two things. There's got to be a reason why the adults aren't dealing with it, uh, aren't dealing with the problem. And there's there's got to be a reason Huge. to have them not be there the whole time. Even Usually because they're just legs, in it? Like... Yeah, in Tom and Jerry, yeah, they're just legs. In uh, oh, Charlie God, Brown, they're so... legs. So <laughs> sure. basically, if if you are running a school game, just whenever the, the, the players interact with this uh, uh, teacher... They're so just small. Go, just, just, go, just go, yeah, uh, you, 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 today's your math class. In front long, of you is a really... Pair of legs. In front of you is a big, <laughs> long thing of legs. And uh, it starts to... And the player characters, right? They're just like, sir, can I help, have some help with this assignment? And the teacher just goes... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be a fun yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Thomas! No, in, in, t- in a lot of popular media, and you're going to notice this everywhere now, if you haven't already, uh, the parents are dead. So that's why the kids are doing it. Uh, other ones, other reasons you can come up with if you look at Stranger Things is that nobody would believe them if they even told them what was going on. That's another way to have the parents out of the equation. In this particular case, you do have adults in terms of the teachers, but they are hands-off, uh, in, unless they're teaching. Aside from one of them. But the the point is, is that there is a lack of adults within the story that involves the kids, right? In this case, it's that the school can't be seen to be incompetent because they're getting military funding. And basically, all of the player characters and their friends have been given this ultimatum where they say, look, if you don't solve this mystery, um, then the the school's going to get cut funding and you're going to cost all these people an education. So you've been kind of forced into it in a way because if they were doing it publicly... uh, then they would be shown to be incompetent and the funding would get pulled. But yeah, so yeah, not having adults around. And even when uh, uh, bloody one of you went, one of the characters went back to his hometown and he wanted to go back to his house, I just said that his parents were on holiday and only his butler was still there just partying and doing loads of coke and that. Oh yeah, that was good. Um, Yeah, so I think a lack of parents, but having parents be an ever-looming threat on things, like the character Artorius that that was your roommate, for example, often spoke about his dad, but you're unlikely to ever actually meet him. Oh, wait until my daddy gets back. I could buy you! (laughs) Uh, Right, uh, yeah, mechanics. Mechanics you could use. So I do think... Now we've touched on this a little bit, but I do think having the lessons there, but not having... Don't play out every fucking lesson. Have a table of things that, that might mean... That something interesting will happen that day, but don't do it. There's got to be a lesson-based thing in there. You know, oh, that's uh, a question, like a tough question you just asked. You know, what is? No, no, um, like if like you're in like highlight of a lesson, for example. Oh, there's a tough question in this lesson. Yeah, but it could be that in yeah, in, in on it mean. genuinely in the Persona yeah. games that is a thing, and Persona probably is. If you want to set an RPG in a school, play that fucking game because. It's the best at nailing the feeling without bogging it down. Like often, you you spend a lot of time with your mates throughout the week. More often than not, it'll be you went for a beef bowl with Yosuke. It was nice, right? So yeah. I actually. But then thought... once in a while, you have a breakthrough moment where he'll tell you about his life and things like this. Yeah. yeah so I thought that the um, the lesson mechanic before ever playing it out, because I was uh, aware of it. Because I was just like, oh, we're going to be doing lessons and stuff. I had no idea what it was going to look like. And I was honestly a bit dubious about it because I was just like, "How is it? How is it going to work?" Because I didn't, I had no idea. Well, because imagine if we just sat down. and I was like, "Right, uh, so James, you're doing like, your for the range." Next half hour, we're going to play through everyone's lessons and do this and the other. Yeah, and, and the and way it course... works is actually it's 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 mechanically sound. It's quick enough um, and entertaining enough to keep you uh, keep your attention throughout the necessary 
uh, evil. Because more often you know? than not, a yeah, it's a necessary evil. Like yeah. literally is, and and more often than not, the game will start with the lessons. So all it is is the way I've done it is, it, and and if you want a good system for it, look at Harry Potter and the tabletop RPG. It's free and it's fucking good. But this one, the way I've done it, because I've applied it to D and D specifically, is that the the lads will play out their lessons clubs and professions throughout the week right and all it is is for each lesson you roll a dice versus a difficulty number and that difficulty number is how easy or hard the classes are that week to decide the difficulty number i've just rolled a d20 and that's it that's how difficult classes are this week if they beat it they get an inspiration that they can then use on the mission that happens every friday the assignment whatever you want to call it and that's it. For it. Once it gets to the end of a term, these guys then do exams where they can level up. And for every four uh, lessons that they've succeeded in that term, they can re- try to re-roll an attribute. And you can decide how you want to do that. But Yeah, so if you like do well at every single one of your lessons, then you've got a higher percentage chance of re-rolling your attributes. You can re-roll up. three attributes yeah. and, try and try and boost them up by one. So, yeah. And um, that's outrageous and a really fun sort of... Uh, mechanic as it's well. definitely good I mean uh, what was funny though was that Sean do you remember I said you have to declare which stat you're trying to re-roll before you roll it because you're rolling a d20 and trying to get above your stat to get a plus one yeah. and I said you have to do it before and Sean rolled the dice and just went strength after he'd rolled the dice yeah yeah it was it I, I there's, a, there's a much I longer delay as well. No, I but in addition to this, um, <laughs> the way that clubs and that work is, is kind of different so the second that you join a club and you attend one class uh, or a profession, same thing. You'll get uh, a plus one to as a skill on your sheet. So, for example, James, you've got has to relate. Yeah, Definitely, yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got Lorim, uh, Lorimer. Uh, yeah. I just use the professions from the book, so you could be a woodsman, whatever, right? And you get a plus one in it. But to keep that, when you get to exam time, which is level up time, you have to you have to roll to see if you can keep it. Uh, if you fail, you need to do the class for another year to then keep the skill. Uh, another term, sorry. Or if you succeed, you keep that plus one and you can either move to a new one or... or try and make it a plus two. Exactly. By doing the same class and yeah. doing the same thing over again. The other thing we've spoken about is the school encounters. So every time, for every day of lessons, you're just rolling once. I'm not doing five lessons a day. It's just every day of lessons you're rolling once. And then these guys can uh, also... Then they'll roll for a random encounter. Just roll a d6 and if you get a one or a two, well, and then you're going to roll on my d50 school encounter chart. Um... That is roughly it for for all all of the mechanics I use. I did start the game with because I think inspir- so so you're earning inspiration every time you succeed in a class to use on a mission. But also a big theme about school things is embarrassment. What's the worst thing that can happen to you at school? It's having a, something embarrassing about you last for a while. So if these guys ever rolled a crit fail, that's an embarrassment. And instead of you getting an inspiration, I get an embarrassment that I can use on you at any point. It's like you remember the embarrassing thing and suddenly you get D6 less on whatever role you're doing. Um, but I just I hated using it, so I didn't use it. But if you're a harsh GM, you might like to use that. Yeah, you started using it, but then because your lack of using it, you ended up pulling them up. And then it was ridiculous. Like, well, I've got to spend them now, haven't I? One character had eight, and, and you know... The idea is is that if you are using that system, actually use it. But I, I just hated it, man. It just it, it, it really felt shitty, especially if you had a combat where people have rolled, you know, misses yeah. for like eight hits, and then I just go embarrassment, fuck you. So it never felt like a good time to use it. But yeah, those are mostly the mechanics that I've but it used. Never is, never is a good time. That's the point, isn't it? But I just <laughs> couldn't do it. I felt terrible, man. Yeah, like I don't oh, mind, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't mind rolling off against you in in a combat or whatever, and like that that is fair. But then it felt bad. It felt just kind of shitty to me just to be like, here's the thing I can use against you. Because you're undercutting their uh, achievement kind of thing. To what a do you degree, mean? like by using the embarrassment to go against the exactly, player. exactly. If you're rolling against someone, then that means it's like yeah, it's one. But one me as one. the GM choosing a moment for you to remember and it goes badly. Do you know what I mean? It just feels kind yeah. of shitty. I I think that there are certain situations like a con game where that would be really funny. Oh, I would. Like, a con just, game is perfect. I just I don't know if I would keep like it. If you wanted to use it uh, throughout uh, another campaign of it, you take a bit of extra play testing, but you could choose to do like um, a round and roll uh, interval throughout the night of the game and just be like right at this moment embarrassment's going to come Ooh. up if you have it Excuse me. oh so just maybe Sean you fucking no j- j- look no, I can't, like, I'm really sorry that's this 
You, you know, so I just try to count. But out. yes, maybe what we'll do is we is you could have a sand timer that's always yeah. running, yeah. and if when it gets to the bottom, some so, an embarrassment's getting used. Who's that, yeah, or something um, like that. Who's that guy? Like who guy? Never mind. You're back. Which guy? Moonbeam. Yeah, sorry, Moonbeam. Yeah. The thing is, I feel like we've had a really good discussion today. I actually got out some really good points, no, and you've just no, no, you've just, you've like just burped all, all over, over it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, James. Yeah, we finish each other's sentences. Oh, I think. All right, some people are gonna laugh somewhere. All right. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> James just slapped him on the back of the head. Just over and healed over. me, man. Why is it? Sean Sean does very weird ejaculations, and I mean that in a traditional sense. I don't mean it like that. You know when you... What other sense is there, really? No, because you can ejaculate loudly. It's like going, ow! <laughs> ah! Like American Dad, you mean? No, you fuckwit. I mean, uh, I mean, like, in a traditional sense no, of an ejaculation is, is not <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, from the penis. No, I know. Yeah. It, means to, it means a sudden startlement. Yeah. I know. And you make a noise, right? I, I, know. I don't know what better word to use for it, but you, Sean does do them, right? If you make Sean jump, which to means to give them a fright... I don't know if that's only an English term. You, you're then, then you're like Sean always goes yay or yow. And one of my favourite yeah. ones is we were playing F Zero GX once, and Sean oh, fell no. off the he fell off the track. And what did he say, James? Oh no, I've done a pie. Just he says that out of nowhere. That's in his brain, just waiting to come out at any it's given moment. Worse than ah! no, he tried to get him. <laughs> I was trying to get him just then. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. What about who? <laughs> 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 This is bad. That yeah. was an allergy. What, this podcast? No, no. This bit. <laughs> this bit. No, just short. Right, let's just... It is weird, man. Just like wipe everything off the table. Like, just table flip. No, it might break it's another done. mic. Because it's probably oh, yeah. either broke. Job bless. Oh. You definitely broke James's mic. They're having to share one. This <laughs> just podcast. by looking at it. No, um, I'm joking. So, yeah, that's basically it for mechanics. I, I think we, we, we've spoken about reinforcing the right type of themes... Uh, mechanics you could use I think we've gone over fairly well what to do and what not to do I think one of the things I would say not to do and this is what I saw one of my friends and I, and I, like, I like no offence Dan but but he he started off a, ca- a campaign which lasted seven years so it must have been good but I think they played every three four months when they could all get together but um he ran a Harry Potter campaign, and the way he did it was uh, he, he started everyone off by writing them letter invitations to Hogwarts and things like that and I think props are a good thing but that is useless that isn't there's no point of that being part of a game and also I just think there's a there's a point where you just get too heavy into theming and not enough about game mechanics I think that the school parts of the game should be maybe uh, they should be part of it but in Harry Potter and things like this, they come up organically to the point where it's like, okay, the mission is always the main thing, but then you have yeah. these interpersonal relationships scattered within, oh, and that's something you should encourage. Hall, like you get the feel for the, like you get the feel for that straight away, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then and yeah, if somebody says you go to the Great Hall, yeah. you get an idea. But if you if you have a scene where somebody, I think maybe employ a very, uh, like if if you have a scene where a bully is bullying somebody. Just or, or whatever, and have the players react to it. Do their shit. Move on. That's that scene. You know, you don't then spend the whole rest of the day watching them go to from class to class, being sad about it. Do you know like, what I mean? Some kid gets shoved into locker. Oh yeah, I remember that happened to me. I mean, oh yeah, I remember seeing that at school. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, what you do, yeah, what, I suppose what you don't want to do is focus on the superfluous details that aren't part of the plot. I feel like no, the there, there are plots and subplots, but you just you don't want to have it be just like. Oh, let's all pretend we're going to Hogwarts. It needs to be. It needs to be have a plot and a story in a game. You're not just yeah, sitting there, yeah. and it, and that's what that game sounded a bit like. Um, so yeah, re- but that- also uh, the fact is that we're like because it's a bit unfortunate for them because they couldn't get as much into it because they were playing it less. Like we're quite lucky that we get. Yeah, to I think play maybe that's week. why then they would just focus just on the relationship, just in the being at Hogwarts bit of the game. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Try not to do that. Seriously. Um, before we wrap this up, do you, any of you have any good suggestions of what to do and what not to do before we move on? Uh, if you're going to smoke doinks, go to the toilet. No, uh, no, I've got... no, we don't mean... At school. No, 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 Sean. What we, do, oh. what we don't mean is what do you do? What good tips for going to school in an RPG. That's not what we're doing. Do you think that's what we're doing? I've got a good tip. Go on. Uh, a genuine one. Yeah, go on. mad doinks. Fucking sure. Um, if you want to burp, <laughs> don't. Um, so uh, a good tip would be 
uh, as we've alluded to, is the main event being the uh, uh, what is it the the task that we've got to do it on the Friday. Mm. That is should be the centre of it all each time, and just make sure that you know at the end of the day this is a this is a fantasy uh, game, and we are doing some fantasy based stuff heroic kind of deeds going on That's a, and yeah yeah like I know proper what you mean. big battles and all this stuff still keep it still make it D&D yes. it also very much but I, you... I think sorry do, I, will, I will let you finish in a second Sean but, the, oh, but I think what it is and I've just sort of thought of this but I, so it's probably rubbish but if you when you look at Harry Potter or anything like that the relationship parts are gradual and then the adventuring parts are immediate so yeah. it's like I think that's that's kind of it really but yeah Sean what are you going to say no I was going to say it's kind of um, gets you excited as well because you're going like when you get to that part where you have to go on these missions and do this fantasy stuff you're like what's what's waiting around the court it does build up the excitement really uh, I think like it gives you, everything context as well yeah, doesn't it yeah definitely like so yeah well then uh, just to give a recap then uh School bad, school games good. Exactly. But also, (laughs) uh, so the themes, right? We spoke about those. Identity, self-discovery, ambition, temptation, friendship, and loyalty. Those have got to be major parts of any school RPG. We talked about how to apply those. Uh, We talked about some mechanics you could use, uh, like keeping lessons in there, uh, the random encounter tables, and things like this. And also to focus on the gradual and the immediate plot, the immediate plot being playing D&D or whatever system or setting you happen to be using. Um, And that is roughly going to be it, isn't it, lads? But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed no, talking good. to you about it, and we could make some good points. I think I for a fucking change. We were all locked on. Good chat. We were locked on. Good we were chat. locked on. One of us, one of us, not so much. Um, but speaking well, of that person, know, who I'm not going to name, my, we're going to do uh, yeah, shut no. your fucking mouth for a know. second. Sorry. No, like, no, no, sorry, like, sorry. No, like, no, no, because, because you like anyway. Conspiracy oh, wait, corner with the Shauna McLorna. Let's go. Conspiracy corner. Wait, can we talk about James's sweatshirt? Because it really like. Why is it made of that material? Because it's like it looks really nice, but I like because it reminds me of what they used to use. Because they can see this on the because in their ears. No, because I'll take a picture and put it on the Discord. That's like. not good enough. Um, <laughs> there's only about five percent of our listeners are actually on the Discord. But go oh, on. Sorry, it really. No, well, no, this will encourage them. They're really going to want to see this. It really reminds me of like the they, what they used to hold McDonald's cups in, isn't it? Uh, oh yeah it does yeah <laughs> right well if you want to see that on the discord uh, you know never join see up it. right now instead of instead of James's brilliant segue into conspiracy corner is a new one we're going to do conspiracy corner now so my first question for you is can fire melt still be in get your head around <laughs> both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you Right, here we are in Conspiracy Corner. We'll uh, do this, lads, and we'll go for a break, all right? Um, yeah, sure. we're, here we are in Conspiracy Corner. This Sean, this is this is an item we don't often do, but Sean's got a new one, apparently. Text me today. Uh, Sean, Sean, he's... We've obviously, as we all know, never smoked weed because it's illegal and you wouldn't. However, if you did, you might come up with some crack crackpot theories. So, we're going to do some now. Uh, conspiracy Corner this is your segment where you tell us about conspiracies it's not RPG related in fact this one's not even closely RPG re- unless it is uh, tell me well they've got a um, they that's a good start I mean yeah, it's, that's how it always starts mate it's already, well they have got mind control now haven't they so <laughs> no, fucking alright no um, so, just so that you know we are gonna, we're going to mock you pretty mercilessly no, but they, they, well, I wasn't, then, I wasn't let's about mock to talk him in a minute to, I wasn't about to talk about the Illuminati um, <laughs> what about uh, the lizard people uh Ah, oh, we can talk about them if you no. Want. No, 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 the Anunnaki, you mean? <laughs> right, go on in. Tell us about Matthew Perry. Come on. All right, um, Jar bless. This is uh, the only bit I know. Uh, Sean LeBing, Matthew Perry. He died. Um, he was the only talented one, and um, Chandler. Yes. Chan- Chan- yes. Chandler Bing. Yeah. Not Chandler. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chandler. Oh, so because because I thought Chandler was somebody who makes candles, right? 
<laughs> so do you call it a Chand- do, do you call it a chandelier? Do you? Oh, is it a ca- ca- chandelier then? Of course, it's fucking chandelier because you don't call it a chandelier. A chandelier. Yeah, but Sorry, I know f- I fucked it up just then, but don't worry about it. Yeah, Get on with your fucking conspiracy, but, right? We've got we've been recording for an hour and a half. But if you like, but Americans say Flanders. Where it's yeah, like- and I say Flanders, but when I'm speaking about Flanders fields in England, they'll say that. But if I'm, if it's his name. Yeah, all right. Okay, so he died, right? And um, no, what? Yeah, like he died. He Flanders. Was, no, um, so like uh, Chandler, Chandler, <laughs> Chandler died, right? So right. Matthew Perry. He what died. episode was this in? In Friends? Uh, it wasn't. Like they finished that like in nineteen ninety six. So but, what are you talking about? Any did Chandler didn't die, did he? No, Matthew Perry. Did. Matthew. Oh, Perry. right, the actor. Yeah, he died, right? And he plays Flanders. Uh, he played Ned Flanders, and <laughs> no, look, listen, right? I've got to get to my point, right? Because he was the only talented one, right? And he like wrote a book and stuff. And look, I didn't really have this prepared. I just, I just thrown it out there. I just thrown you a bone, right? Sure, it's not a bone. You haven't even said anything yet, mate. You have said nothing. Don't go looking at other people's bones, James. Because I can look at any bones I like. (laughs) No, okay. So he died, right? Right. So Harry, Uh, Harry Harry Shearer died. Yeah, he died. Right. The actor who plays Flanders. Yeah, he did. Right. Uh, no, he didn't. Like Matthew but, Perry died. He's the only uh, talented one. He wrote a book. That's he, what I've got so far. He wrote a book. He wrote his biography, right? And um, like, do you think like because like do you think like his death? Do you think that that was a bit suspicious? Do you think because what well, a guy had a drug and alcohol problem? Yeah, because that is the, this is this what you got? Is no, this what you've got? Because it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Like Sean. What's suspicious about it? I Tell me that. I don't think you'd run with this. I've thrown you loads of other ideas. I didn't think. So your conspiracy corner this week is you making what you think is a okay. funny joke okay. in order to get us to riff no, on it. It's not, That's the best you could no, do. It's not a funny. What's joke. suspicious about it? Tell me what's suspicious no, about it. No, because like he knew some stuff and he had. Uh, right, what's in the book? Like, well, like you could see the cracks. His struggles his, with his addiction yeah, and all that, yeah, even though yeah, he was found in his jacuzzi with no. Yeah. Narcotics. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. How's that suspicious? That's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Like, what, but how? what's going on with that? Like, there's no more fun conspiracies. Yeah, or okay? he was, or he was, or he was, um, rattling, rattling from drug use, and he died. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, Sean, Sean. But, so you, so, so no, I, no, but, no, when but you but said, listen, when no, you said, no, no, here's said, the bit, right? I've got, I've come to a lead. So right, come okay. to a lead of his own mind because okay. no, he hasn't read no, this wait. on Wikipedia. If, leading, if anybody, if anybody, no, guys, see. look, I've got, I've come. I'm, I, oh, he's come. <laughs> 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 no. No. <laughs> Sean, you're not going to top that. I'm no, sorry, mate. Like, we're moving on. Bad. No, we're moving that was on. Getting cut. No, that was getting cut as a segment. I've come. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Honestly, uh, whatever you say okay. now, I'm cutting no, it right there. Right. So uh, some people have come out and said it's a suspicious death, right? He's the, um, he's some guy on the Joe Rogan's. Have you have you watched Harry Potter? Yes. Series one, two, three, four, five. Of Korea Mission. Got another segment, dragon or blagging. Let's go into it, please. Dragon or blagging? <laughs> dragon or blagging? This is a game show. Sorry about that bit, just then, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is this. It's not a game show. It's a seg. Oh, my, honestly, my morale is so low. What about the non-binary? Shut people? up. We'll go for this. We're gonna go for this. <laughs> right, let's crack it. Let's we'll crack go. It. We'll do. Well, we'll do this, and then we'll go for a break. Okay, this is Lord of the Rings. No, it's not. It's dragon. It's dragon or blackin, right? The the idea is is that these questions are going to be like I've made stuff up, and you got to guess the real thing. And the subject that we're doing today is Lord of the Rings. Now, if you've ever gone to the Lord of the Rings wiki, right, or if you ever tried to read the book, you understand that there's so much waffle and crap, and it's no wonder that people enjoy the films more than the book. I'm sorry about that, but you just do. And be honest with yourself, you haven't read it, so shut up. Um, which <laughs> which of these is a real sentence? from the Lord of the Rings wiki, right? There's going to be three here. You have to decide which one's the real one. Number one, originally called Lund, he was accounted as the wisest of the Glorfanderil. He was created by Graal the Animistic before the siege of Amon-Ra. That's sentence one. Sentence two, originally called Olorin, he was accounted as the wisest of the Maiar. He was created by Luvatar before the music of the Ainur. That's sentence two. Sentence three, originally called Mandalf, he was accounted as the wisest of the Ilanvaranlalas of the Melendria. He was created by Deagle before the scroll of... Sentence three. Boom. No. That's the real one, is it? What's the real one? Yeah. 
No, okay. You I'm, think Gandalf was originally called Mandalf? Look, no, I'm not. Look, right, I'm, I, I know there's supposed to be some that's, mystery. That's right? obviously I a Harrisonism. I thought it was one. But okay, so you, all right, so you're going with one. So shit. The fact that it was so shit, like Mandalf, made me think that maybe it was. Oh no! Yeah, I no, I get you. I've, I, you threw us a bone there. I knew that. I knew that was right. It's so like you're going Sm- with one. It's like Smeagol's rival being called Deagle. Like. I want to go with. I want to go with two, just so I have a different answer. So I'm going to go with two. Sean. Yeah, one, one. Yeah, uh, Gandalf's name was not originally Lund. Uh, it was Olorin. No. So uh, it's two. Yeah, you're right, James. Uh, that is a real sentence about a character in a book who is just. Music look, in the all fucking. All I want to know. All I want to know is this. He's a wizard. He does cool shit. Yeah. But uh, that's it. That's you it. shall not pass. Well, so say Ian, say t- Ian. It has been about 10 years since I watched the film and about 20 since I've read the... Watched the film? Read the book. You never read the book. No, I've read Everyone's the tried to read the book. I've Sean seen. claims to have read them all. All right. Can you vouch for this? Well, then, let's see, because we're about to do more of this quiz. All right, let's go. Frodo's name is based on a Norwegian word, Frodo. But what does it mean? And uh, so you have to guess the name of the word. So I'm just going to clarify with that with you, Sean. Um, A. Little idiot. <laughs> B. Brave child. C. Wise one. D. Boy of ga- great strength. Or E. Cum guzzler. Oh. D <laughs> e sounds pretty good. Um, can you give me A and B again, please? Little idiot or brave child. And then there's wise one or boy of great strength or cuz cuz cum guzzler. Oh, I want it to be a little idiot, um, because it sounds very hobbity, and he is a little idiot. S- but I strength. think brave child is probably going to be it. James, you going brave child, Sean? Great strength, boy of great strength. That you are wrong. It is actually wise one. Oh, I'm really disappointed. Yeah, so he's come I'm really from the Norwegian for wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, next question: Tom Bombadil is an annoying twat yes. that features it in the books, yeah. but not in the films. Um, and he's one of the worst parts of what is otherwise a good book, but he's known by the elves as Larwain Ben Adur. But what does that mean? This is an elvish word, so they do actually say it within the book. It's not; it doesn't require knowledge of Norwegian in this particular case. So, um, is it A. He who is most travelled, B. Walker of roads, C. Oldest and fatherless, D. Abracadaniel, E. Cum guzzler. Walker of roads. <clears throat> James uh, and what are the other two beside those uh, he who is most travelled or oldest and fatherless oh I like oldest and fatherless uh, James you're right actually it's a bit nice well done so he's, yeah. he's he's a character that's sort of like mystical origin so people don't actually know what race he is and he's like immune he sounds very he's also immune to the ring yeah. And he lives in a big yellow thing out in the woods, and he also sings songs. And this sort of became the famous thing that people know about Tom Bombadil because he he in the book he sings the songs, and a lot of people have listened to the audio book or uh, seen the listen to the BBC radio play of Lord of the Rings. And in that, he has to, obviously has to actually sing the songs. So while you're reading the book, you just skip over them entirely because why would you read them? And he's uh, the songs lyrics are like ring ding a dillo, dillo ring a ding, and things like this. It's um, fucking weird. Also, um, the thing about the Lord of the Rings, the other books, because I read The Hobbit and then like, I got to those and it was like quite scary. Are they as big as I remember them being? Or no, oh. no, because the, the, the all six books combined. Um, just I looked at Sean there to see if he reacted to that. All six books. So there's four. Ah, there we go. Who's read the books now, Sean? But there's, there's four books. No, there's six. There's six. Oh, there's six. What? The set, originally, it was six books. Fellowship of the Ring is two books that then got combined into one volume. So it's three volumes, six books. Sucker bag of dicks. I don't think he's ever read the book. But let's see. Let's see when we get to the next question. Got what me. is J.R.R. Tolkien's real name? Now, now, I know that's not in the book. Don't answer it yet. I'm not, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna read the options out, but I know that's not in the book. But as a real Tolkien fan, you would know this. Tolkien scholar. You're a Tolkien scholar, right? So. Is that what they're? Yeah. Yeah. No, there are Tolkien scholars, like there are Shakespeare ones. Yeah. Yeah. For real. For realsies. So, um, what's his real name? A. Josiah Ronald Reagan Tolkien. B. Jeffrey Raymond Robert Tolkien. C. John Ronald Raoul Tolkien, D. 
D, Jamiroquai Red Dead Redemption token. D. Okay, James? I'm going to go for... Uh, what was being to see again? I'll give you B, I'll give you A as well. It's Josiah Ronald Reagan, Jeffrey Raymond Robert, or John Ronald Royal. It's B, in it, but I'll go with D because it's I'll the go, best I'll answer. I've got B in it, yeah. Well, look, lads, the correct answer... Is <laughs> and, and you know you, you're honestly going to be surprised by this. I just had to Google it because I forgot to mark it on my little notes here. Uh, it is John Ronald Real token, but you went B, so you're wrong. Sean, you're wrong. It is not Jamiro Cry Red Dead Redemption token, but good guess. Well, thank you. Good guess. Yeah, it's my. Xbox You've never read the books. No. no, look, Sean. I do believe you. I'm sure you read them. Um, I, I, I read I them. Just, the random. I was just. I was just joshing. With, most people don't know there were six books. Most people don't yeah, know because yeah. they were divided into three volumes. I guess, like, when they were updated for, like, you know, I mean, I don't know, like, it was like, I guess there was probably a revival at some point. That well, now they just sell it as one big thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, all right, uh, let's have a little break. In the future, you will be able to send a letter or parcel from anywhere on the planet. This, sir, is the Electro Letter. Love that pause, I do. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> right, let's do some electro letters then. Uh, first one comes in from Owen Purple Drank Lean. Uh, by the way, if you want to submit your questions, you can uh, join the Discord link in the description. Owen Lean, he says, What the fuck have you been doing with your life without a podcast? I'll tell you what, a bit, I'll tell you what I've been doing, mate. Uh, don't, don't know if you know this, a bit of a sore subject, but uh, yeah, my wife got a bit old, didn't she, mate? So. <laughs> That's what, that's what I've been doing. And you would know that as a friend of mine, so a bit of an insensitive question. Um, I look forward to the apology, mate. <laughs> Tell you the truth. I've been playing Final Fantasy VI, actually. So. That's true, I did do that as well. Uh, well, You haven't done that in, in place of the podcast. No, no, no. That was around times where I could possibly play it. And, uh, to be fair, I didn't just complete Final Fantasy VI. I did, I did 12 as well, so... <laughs> <laughs> And Tears of the Kingdom. Moonbeam, he says, what is love? Baby, don't hurt, hurt me. me. Um, don't hurt right, let's me. really unpack this question, because... No. Love, it depends how you view it. Is it the romance explosion? Because I often say things like, I love that new burger from McDonald's. Yeah. But is that real love? Um... It depends what you do to it. It's not like the love you have for, like, say, Wendy's or... You oh, know. Wendy, yeah, she's... Wait. My upstairs neighbour's called Wendy. How old is she? She's like 60 or something. She also No, well, that's the weird so thing. She's much younger burgers. than I am. Shut up, oh, no. And she's Wendy. What do you mean? Just she's flipping burgers? What, because she's a woman? No, like, because Wendy's because has... Wendy's burgers. She has square burgers. Uh, what's that? American, uh... Um, Wendy's. Fast food restaurant. We, got, uh, we, we had one in Croydon once. Wendy's. Remember? No, I don't think I know it. Wendy's. Uh, good question. No, she's not a good question. That's a fucking stupid question. Go away. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> ages. CJ, he says, if two trains were approaching the same city, one travelling at 100 kilometres an hour and the other travelling at 120 oh, kilometres an hour, Go on. what kaiju would you have attacked the city? And let's, let's just, uh, just to put a bit of a spin on this, what kaiju would you have attacked the city? Let's say if we were running a campaign and the kaiju, a kaiju had to feed a, a, a big bad, what would it be? Um, that really large Eric Cartman, I think. Probably pick from probably pick from uh, existing kaiju, as that's probably happened in South Park, hasn't it? Yeah, um, probably. I can't believe you watched that crap. Um, um, so, uh, no, like, pick a pick like a pick like an actual kaiju, not a South Park character. Still one of the best shows they've ever made, but like that's fine. Right? In what way? Um, you've never watched. It's it, satire. So it's, it's funny. They shit on things that are current. Like, um, tell me you've never watched it without telling me you've never watched it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough then. It just looks shit, all right? I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> James? Um, I think I'll just go for the old... Uh, the book standard Gojira, isn't it? Is that the only one you know? No. Go it's on. like the Kong King. It's Godzilla. Oh, that's a good one too, though. Like a Godzilla. Shin Godzilla. To be honest, I'm a big fan of Mothra. Always have been. Don't know, I think it's because it's a lady Mothra. one. Mothra. 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 Actually, yeah, and I'm we, side of Mothra because of our chance. Because we had that in one of our games as well, because it's a monster in MCC uh, called Evox, I think it's called. Um, um, oh, yeah, like Kappa. I like Kappa. There. Or maybe <laughs> Tanuki. Is that 
Um, no, that's a different type of thing, isn't it? Tanuki's it? fucking um, a Japanese a, a, raccoon. A, yeah, a real raccoon, right? Yeah. But oh. but B, it's okay. um, what is it? That's a it's a yokai. Yokai. Oh, it's not kaiju. Oh, Kaiju's that's a big one. one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Um, I would also accept the answer that pumpkin, that wrapping pumpkin from Power Rangers. That's a good one, that's right? That's a good. That is a good one. Hip hop pumpkin. The um, uh, giant bot. I think. I saw even, Rita from Power Rangers was quite hot. So. <laughs> I don't well, think Re- does Rita sound. repulse it I suppose yeah fucking because it is a Sentai program isn't it isn't it fucking yeah but then. didn't she get bulbous at one point as well when she got all witchy and like, when they changed the actor no it's in like and you know when they put them in the foam stuff but I think I think one of the things I, I do like kaiju movies right but one of the things I like is when you can tell how it was made that's part of the fun of it, right? Yeah, I love it. It's like, oh, there's that string. You can see that cardboard cut out. You can tell there's Kellogg's on the back. See, this is what was so cool about the original Godzilla is that the guy, like, got actual, like, third-degree burns in that suit because they were, you know, where you see him knocking over electric poles and they're sparking, that's really happening. When a suit's on fire, it's really on fire. <laughs> love <laughs> that shit. So, I think... Sadly, my only experience of, like, kaiju movies is the 1998 American Godzilla. That, but that's canon. It's canon. Is it? Yeah, do you know oh, what it is? that's another Godzilla, so, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's called Zilla now in the, yeah. in, in the universe. And in the Your film... Your man is Zilla. <laughs> in the film uh, Godzilla Attack All Monsters, I think it's called, it's where all the kaijus come together and fight. And there's a bit in it where the American Godzilla turns up and he's... He, like, if you actually look at it in the in that film the american one that godzilla's way smaller than the original oh, so okay. there's a point almost as if to say the toho film company are like fuck you americans there's a point where the real godzilla picks up the american one and just yeets him into a building because it's just like fuck you he just picks him up with one hand and just throws him it's so fucking oh, actually, cool like there is another thing do you remember do you guys remember the godzilla cartoon yeah um, yeah yeah where it had baby godzilla in it yeah godzuki also yeah. canon is it? Yeah, because what? Godzuki then got put into the uh, into the mainline ones, and they had more stories where kids from Japan were like looking up at Godzilla, like "Yay, he's come to save us!" Instead of him being a disaster, <laughs> that it was meant to meant to mimic nuclear war. But well, that's not kaiju. But now could, could, could we slap um, cocaine bear in the mix? Too small. If it was a giant, co- if it was a giant cocaine bear, yeah. <laughs> also Godzilla. That's Can a good. I... That would be a good choice for her campaign villain, though, especially if it what, was Call of Cthulhu. It was an entertaining watch as well. It's just something real trashy, but like. It's, anyway, it's, look, my answer is going to be the like... robot from the Beastie Boys music video, the one that's clearly made of cardboard. That's what I want. <laughs> um, also, Godzilla, if you could destroy the business district, I'd be most grateful. Thank you. That's like, that. I... Wow. Edgy boy over here. My, Take my, that, the man. My kaiju of choice is going to be all the Gundams. It's a, referen- <laughs> it's a reference to the SNES Godzilla game. Well, there are a lot of films where Gundams fight the monsters, so it'd be good if we had an evil one. Mm. In fact, does Ultraman ever turn evil? Ultraman. man. That's literally how they say it. And he, he's, he's, he's not even a, a giant robot, he's just a man that turns really big. Well, good. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, what is it? Box from the Beastie Boys music video, wrapping pumpkin, etc., etc. It is it to Thid. Um, he says, My current Masks of Nialo Thep campaign is running up soon. Yes, I'll soon be without my cock. That means Call of Cthulhu is not funny. Yes. And they've asked me to run the next long term campaign. As the group leans very weeaboo, I'm thinking about running a traveller game in the vein of anime like Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, or Black Lagoon. Any advice or thoughts for making the game feel anime? No. It is a thing that you made one major error. Uh, anime isn't a genre, but I do know what he means, right? Well, take, for instance, the school campaign we're playing. Well, well, yeah, technically, Fantasy Star is very... Uh, the, the video game is, is very anime. I mean, it was one of the first games to feature cutscenes in it, and it has... More like cuck scenes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty... I mean, that is childish, but it's... It, but, but well done. Okay. Um, and it has it's very it's very anime cutscenes as well. <laughs> cutscene. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I should, that is it's annoying that that made me laugh because it's not good and nobody listening is going to be like yeah that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, thoughts for making a game feel like an anime. Um. He's looking for a uh, 
certain brand of anime though isn't he really specifically gritty space animes by the looks of it but also they do have some of the tropes in there yeah well just do exactly what you're doing in the uh, fantasy star campaign we're doing focus on the the main system as like the main event and everything that's happening where all the action goes but make sure for instance if you want all the anime tropes you lean into it and be like right you're all sat at the back left of the classroom uh, looking teacher, at security teacher comes over tits are wobbling uh, you well, know, I, all think, that I think of stuff. I think one of one of the things is because yeah even Cowboy Bebop which is a very good anime has a uh, fan service but I think one of the things is that you've got to enough a lot of it <laughs> really because anime isn't a genre right and in fact even in uh, Cowboy Bebop the episodes switch genre fairly often right mm. I mean that guy who made it whose name I can't remember is known for doing that right but the thing is, it's like the the different episodes will be different genres. But the you you ideally want to have uh, tropes of those genres, right? And so so I think a lot of it is still the flavour, isn't it? It's the, the Cowboy Bebop is like very smoothly animated and has that very cool flair and flavour to it. And you want to kind of encourage players to describe things in a way that feel particularly anime. Because there's a reason, say, for example, the Western Cowboy Bebop is nowhere near as cool as the as the original manga, right? Yeah. Anime, sorry. Despite having John Cho in it, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. They got the yeah, yeah. He's he is actually quite good. Yeah, he is. He's... But uh, but they stretch the episodes out. Anyway, the point is, is it's a lot about flavor. I think the anime and there's there's not really a lot that you could do mechanically other than rewarding your players, give them extra XP, bennies, inspiration, whatever. If they describe the ma- their moves in a cool way, that's something you've been doing a lot, James, with your cool acts and mm. really leaning into the anime stereotype of having unbelievably cool attacks. If well, so, if we somebody... watch a lot of anime at the, at the table mm. generally, excluding Harrison, but in, in all encompassing, there's a lot of anime consumption. So we even at certain descriptor points we say like, oh yeah, he p- pokes his glasses up and it does the anime glint. You know that kind of stuff. That really, that kind of description really helps. It, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows what that looks like. Absolutely, and and also I think encourage your players. Maybe write it down on a sheet. It doesn't have to be a mechanical thing. Yeah. What's their signature move? Yeah. Shining finger. Like if if you attack somebody with this. If you attack somebody, it's say if you attack somebody with your sword, yeah. and you reckon you're going to kill them, that's when the super move comes out. So you just be like shining the finger. Or like. Um, yeah, announcing your moves. Have you is seen quite that one with that Japanese voice actor talking about Earth Blaster? Because it's <laughs> because he's like he's like he's like this is a problem when you have to say English words because they think it sounds cool. Earth so, uh, Blaster. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then uh, also um, with the oh no, I forgot what I was going to say. But yeah, like if you're like you could have because because you got like an. Uh, like anime, you could. You've got like anime. You could start out making your characters inspired by an- different anime characters and stuff. But also, like if they do something stupid or if they're like well, I, I, really weird and lewd, you could like give them a horny bonk stuff like that. Like that. No, means, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not what, telling people to sex up in no. their games. No, not sex up. No, what I mean is what's like, a horny, horny bonk? bonk? You know when you like you get like they get a bash on the back of the head and then the, <laughs> right. Oh, and it makes a yeah. Right, and okay. They have like a lump Fuck. on their head. Horny bonk. I just wanted Sorry, a jelly donut. Much. I got on the internet too much. <laughs> yeah, but it's always then that voice comes out. Oh my god, I thought you liked me. But it'll be like. And there's a little ghost that comes out, isn't it? And... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, really, really it, encourage, it. encouraging flavour. And I think that it only, it's only going to work if you're sitting there doing all the anime descriptions and all of your players are playing characters yeah, like it's not they working. usually do. It's <laughs> not going to fucking work. They have to lean into it and to get them to do it, uh, uh, add an incentive for describing their moves in a cool way. Don't give it all the time, but when it's fucking cool and it really serves the plot, like if they're about to kill a bad guy that's really been grinding their ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like something like that. Yeah. That and, and also Sean, you actually bring up a good point. There's um in ICRPG the first thing you do before and this is something I've employed recently, is that the first thing you do before you sit down and put your pen to paper and make your character, you choose an image that fits your character. So that could be your mini, but or in this case it could be the portrait. So print off some anime portraits and say, Right, pick one of these, this is your character and then make it based around the picture. Um, I also I think it makes the characters fit the minis a lot better so you can mm. do what Sean did and he's bought some coin holders 
just printed out circular images, put them in there, and then you've got a bunch of minis for use for your table. Do that with like a hundred anime portraits and just slap them on a table. Pick one. This is what your character looks like. Um, good advice, actually, lads. Well done. You're great. Ch- Chicken McBacklog. He said, if Sean had an evil twin, how would they GM a campaign? Now he's uh, well. Let's ask Harrison. What's are you? Are you? G- Sean, oh, that's, fu- that's outers. For those that don't know, Sean is my brother. Um, uh, well, you talk. Um, do you like, reckon I am? Um, I am in a lot of ways. Well, like, that's shocking. How, like, did people just think we had the last name then? It's a common surname, Sean. Somebody, James's next door neighbour growing up was called Hunt. Do you know him? Uh, it's, it's his first name, Simon. No. Because oh, I know Simon Hunt. Oh, wow. is he, and is he your brother? <laughs> no. no wow. Right, point taken. Simon Hunt, this one's James for you. Clark, but yeah. I, have, I have a funny anecdote because, no, actually. Tell the anecdote. You've got to say it now. No, because like, he, um, once I went, like, because he, he basically is a boxing instructor for one of my guys at a care home. Hashtag fuck the care home. Uh, and, um, like, sure, don't say that. They're your employers. What if they listen to this? Um, I was making a reference to something one of your listeners said. Sorry, on the is Discord, that too, is that right. too highbrow for people? Or? Somebody is that Sean. Sean, Sean is Sean, joking. Sean, Sean does a lot of deep you, cuts. Can I we just? Can job. we just? Can we I just? Yeah, job. you love your job, don't you? And and the thing is, is that somebody said on the podcast because you know we were somebody said on the Discord. Sorry, we were we're having a go at Sean for not being here for a couple of episodes because yeah. he was busy with his job that he loves. And so somebody jokingly said on the Discord, "Fuck Sean's care home," <laughs> and that's funny. But when you but say it's a deep cut, it's a deep cut, as well. and it's a Not reference to something one guy said once. on a different channel oh, on a Discord yes. that most people wouldn't have even fucking seen if they were on the Discord. And so many of our listeners aren't. Look, that was too smart. Okay, cut. Smart. Let's, in what way? Okay, look. Let's cut this out. Go on and tell us. Tell us. We, no. I, I will. I will cut that out. But tell us bit, the Simon Hunt anecdote, please. I got a bit confused because like one of our guys goes boxing and this guy's name Simon Hunt I didn't know before um, and he gave me a receipt with his signature on it and it said S Hunt on it and that's and I was like Why, how did he know my name I haven't told him my name um, right ha 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 yeah that so how, if you're Sean and Evil Twin how would they GM a campaign I think in, in many ways oh, I, I think we'd all so, survive no but I am sort of like the, the opposite of Sean aren't I because I'm quite loud annoying obnoxious Sean's the really. quietest thing going. No, but you are loud, but... No, but he's also obnoxious. Fuck you! <laughs> no, I, I am, I am, I am quite loud. I'm also hard. No, I think, I think what they're trying to say, what they're trying to ask is, like, could anyone? Because we always complain about his TPK campaigns and how, um, so, so, how uh, rules uh, written. Sean's Sean evil. Is, Sean, e, e, <clears throat> Sean's evil twin would, would, fu- do, would do fudge evil. every role to make sure the players live. No, no, no. His evil twin would just fuck us from like within thirty minutes. What so you think Every it'll be even it'll start. be even worse? Yeah. Be even that's worse. Thing, that's thing that's what the person's aiming oh, at. Yeah, we were sort of looking for Yeah, because I suppose it, that, that what I'm describing is a no but he's he's You're su- doing the opposite no, no, this an is opposite what I'm saying. twin, not evil twin. No, but the evil twin is the opposite of Sean, right? And the thing is, he would do that so that we never feel a real sense of achievement because he lets us win every time. That's the real evil. Yeah. He would make the game so mundane. He would fudge every roll so that we always win. We kill every bad guy in one hit, and every time we roll on the loot table, we get ten thousand gold. Oh my god! And then, okay, and then it would be, the that's game harsh. would become so easy that we would never. We just play meme that's, sounds that's throughout the whole. Yeah, yeah. That's very much anti. <laughs> Mega. Me. No, What's it? that's very much anti me. It yeah. is. That's the point. It's your evil twin. Did you remember the question? Yeah, I did. I'm just <laughs> adding to the the point that you're making. Boggle the infamous. He says, is it really possible to do a mystery style adventure without railroading the players? Yes. Here's how. So, um, the, you, with a mystery adventure, right? Mystery often... slide adventure. Like, style. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were talking. Like, I thought it was. Re- I thought sure, it was re- honestly, I thought it was you are a, that Simon Hunt anecdote was so shit. Right, anyway. Um, right, mystery style adventure without railroading. Here's how you do it, right? The, you with a mystery style adventure it's all about gathering all the clues until the moment where they all click into place together they all have to make sense right once you've got all the clues together to then solve the mystery do the final scene right if you want to do that have the various clues strewn about the city or wherever the game takes place and have the players try to find them in any order they want so what the, you could have let's say the six clues um, that are going to make everything make sense 
just have them start the game with six leads and they can follow it wherever they want. And That's like, it's more like picking you which station to... you arrive at, but uh, it's it's less railroady and it means they get complete freedom to do everything how they want. Yeah, like how you get to and react to the the leads. Uh, is you know that's that's there's a lot of agency there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you're, you're still gonna maybe come across ways in which you have to get the clues, but nonetheless, it's gonna make them feel a less uh, less railroaded. I guess there's no way to do a truly 100% open cho- choose your goals adventure with a mystery adventure, but that's not really the fucking point, is it? So yeah, that's that's that would be my advice. Um, just have them tackle the uh, things in whatever way they want. Um, Doctor Mumson. He also says, "Is railroading always bad?" I no. don't think it is. No, it's not. It's it's not always bad. I it? think it's I think I think it's got a negative connotation because it's it's not always bad. And I've played games where I think the very minimum that a game needs to be uh, in terms of openness is to allow players to interact with. Uh, individual scenes and solve them in manners they think is fitting mm. there's certain parts where it has to be really where it has to jump and like alright here's the story it can yeah. be unless you're just running a complete open world that's just a life sim and that is how some people like to run their games it's like they can just run around investigating MCC was a bit like that but then like you say it has to get real ready at a certain point because in <clears> MCC <throat> you did have a goal like and even, yeah. even like Fallout like like there were parts where we had a goal yeah, and yeah. so so it was like it's not completely free and open because but then we could choose to I don't know the, the point it's is just, railroading yeah. isn't always bad that's the in fact I've played some great games like a lot of well like con games you should expect them to be because you have to be focused if you, you have to buy across, in. if you go across the beaten track then you're going to have to be refocused so. you've only got four hours yeah. and usually, but yeah. some games are like connected con games especially I know with GMs that make terrain Mm. And they do it. It might be, let's say, for example, I don't know. Their their quest is all about capturing a princess from an evil wizard that's that's taken her prisoner. Right? It could be that you'll start off, and the GM will just have this scene out, and he'll just tell you, uh, okay, your characters have marched for days to get to the bottom of the wizard's tower, and suddenly yeah. you are jumped by orcs, and he gets this big terrain out, and you play on that for the evening. Yeah, those are, those that's kind of cool. But then well. it might be like. Uh, the next scene will be like you've travelled for many hours and got to the second floor of the dungeon but then something devious happens and you'll play on this next terrain that, and then you play on that for a night That's and it's like this is also very rewarding as well in its own way it's like oh we got through this really hard bit it's like really it's just like a video game isn't it yeah exactly and that, and that's fine because you're still creating a character with stats you're still role playing within the scenes they've set out and I think it, yeah. it's a legit way to play it's just that most people do prefer a bit more freedom in an RPG because that's one of the things it can do but then uh, my yeah yeah maybe uh, it, it depends it depends I mean I, 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 it depends there's always a certain level of freedom the players don't have that you're trying not to tell them but do you know what I mean yeah, mm. yeah. but um, I think in this case yeah when he says rare wedding always bad no it isn't and like my mate Gary for example he'll often he usually runs plot point pre-made campaigns right but he also the campaigns that he's written himself are very much like that. He makes these really cool fucking scenes on uh, uh, virtual tabletop. What is it called? I don't know. The oh, virtual ta- that, that one on Steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, tabletop simulator. Oh, that's it. Yeah. And he spends hours making them. Man makes these really cool three D scenes that are fucking amazing. And it's like, so if if that's he tells me this is this is today's scene, we've got this big scene set out. We're gonna fight on it all, and and have a massive battle all night, and then we'll move to another one. And I just think that's fun. He's got a cool story that behind the scenes and cool context, your characters can be themselves amongst this big fight, and you get your stats are still important. And it's a it's a legit way of doing a game. That's why I think I don't think the railroading is the right term for it. And I think maybe it should be like a curated game or mm. a scenario based game. Do you know what I mean? I just don't. I don't know. I think railroading isn't always bad. But when it's bad, it's fucking bad. Well, you've got linear games. So it's like yeah, linear game is a better way of saying it, yeah. Because yeah. like, nobody complains that, for example, uh, The Last of Us, that nobody complains that it's not open world because it's good at what it's doing. Yeah, it, it, yeah exactly. it, you know. But then there are a lot of games that suffer from being too open. If, if, I, if I sat down to you and just said, plonk you in this world and go, right, what do you want to do? It's like you've got to have something. You've got to give some hooks to the players, don't you? So, yeah. Ch- oh, this is a good one. F- uh, Chicken McBacklog. He says, "Favorite type of bread." Why? The, I knew that is that's such the basic bitch answer. What type of white bread? Do you like a sourdough? Do you like a tiger bread? 
Oh. White. Well, white. I just, toast, I just, just white, white toasty. Mate. When when you say the white, the thick toasty. This is like standard. the time when Jack, we were asking James what his favourite meal that he cooks is, and he said that the one he does because he batch cooks a bunch of pasta, and he said it's my favourite meal because of sustenance, and it's like anything can fucking sustain you. What's your favourite meal to eat because you like it? The, the very fact that you've just what's your favourite bed? White. I think no. I just think James, you know, like comfort like, food, isn't it? It's just like you can have a slap no, a bit of butter country. and white toast. I've got, but I tell you what, I'm not going to lie, Sean. I am sorry for mocking you just then, James. But my answer is going to be quite similar. I think if if I, if if there's no budget, we're talking here. I'm going a very very nice sour sour as you like sourdough, right? But um, yeah, like the, the new type of bread we get here now called toasty. Yeah, it's like extra thick and it's yeah. made chemically in yeah. a lab. Yeah, that's the stuff. So that so that's that the one. I'm when you toast about. it. The middle bit still says stay soft, and it is the fucking best. And that, it, you like you said, too much food. butter on it. Yeah, 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 yeah just good. so much. It's like dripping with butter, loads of peanut butter, marmite, whatever. Fuck, it's the uh, and like for can you can get it from little for seventy five p, and it's the best fucking bread. And it's like <laughs> I don't know how they do it because you could buy a loaf for three quid from that bakery near yours, Sean, and it's like it's good, but it's not fucking toasty, man. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like there's so many answers though. Like I mean, because like we haven't even gotten into crumpet territory yet. Like it's bread. Though. Yeah, it is a bread though. But I'm. Uh, let's talk. Let's about. just let's talk loaves. Because uh, uh, otherwise we're getting too big right, there. Cause... Tiger split tin. Split tin's pretty ping. What's split tin? Oh, you know the you know the one you get from the bakery that's like got ears in it. Oh, those. Oh yeah. The way you cut off a huge fucking doorstop and have a bacon sandwich. That's, yeah. It, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's the fucking shit, man. Yeah. That's the stuff, man. <sighs> God, I love bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we got one more. It comes in from Cuckold the Clown. He says, I have a problem. When I play, I always get annoyed with GMs because usually it's one of my players who doesn't normally do it. What? When I play, I always get annoyed with GMs because usually it's one of my players who doesn't normally do it and they aren't great. That really hurts. What is he saying? No, so he gets he's, annoyed, he's with, the he gets annoyed are, with GMs aren't because good at it. He, yeah, he oh, gets annoyed with shitty it's GMs. His players that do the GMing and he doesn't like it because he's because he's you, he's okay. there forever GM. Yeah. And then every once in a while, one of his players will do it and they're rubbish. Okay. And we've experienced one of those. No, in fact, I, in fact, I can give a good example of somebody that will never get offended by it because they will never listen to this. We'll get into that in a minute. Ace, we'll finish your question. Uh, it's all. Oh, let me check the rule. Now I think you know where I'm going with this. He, he, the, anyway, his qu- question continues. It's all. His question continues. It's all. Oh, let me check the rules. Or they spend ten minutes preparing for each fight. I never let my players know this, but I do combat by hits, not by damage. Tend to use four or five HP equals one hit. So if a monster has three D six plus three HP, that's an average of twelve HP. So that takes four five hits. So he just does it. He doesn't bother tracking HP um, in boss fights. So he just does it by if you've hit it five times, it's going down. It's annoying because um, like it sounds like Ace is a really good GM, and his players don't really appreciate. No, they don't pick up what he's laying down work. because he's not sharing his secrets. Because GM secrets are quite big. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they, they can. Are. I mean, I mean, they let's, are, but let's, we do let's, share. We do share tips, though. Yeah, we do because we run a fucking podcast. No, that, but, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, um, we do. Well, we, shut up a minute. We run a poddy. Um, no, so, no, shut up. A yeah. pod, don't call it a poddy ever again, mate. That's <laughs> pathetic. Um, but <laughs> <I'm> chalky. <laughs> Sean knows I have a problem with certain names of things and it fucking winds me up like one of the things he says a dessert at Domino's called Chocky Chunks and it, f- it winds <laughs> yeah that's Chocky yeah yeah um, anyway his question is kind of two things right he says that he hate, he gets annoyed with GMs that are that do it rarely and it's a problem yeah but so yeah. we'll we'll sort that out and then we'll talk about right, the hits for let's bosses let's sift through that right because yeah. like he sift so. you've got to but let's be honest you've got to start let's sift right because you've got to start somewhere and those players are starting somewhere. Oh, and no, I yeah. used I used Good to be a, a bit of no offense, Ace, but I used to be a bit of a snob like you. And then I realised that sometimes you it's not not about lowering your expectations, but it's also about letting that person do the things they do good and then giving them friendly critique, right? Yeah, definitely. But but my God, was Nick's first game terrible? It was my. Oh, God. And he knows that though. He, I, I know he, he, he. I know. He know I know he, he knows it, but I don't think he it, knows. So. 
He, oh, he definitely learned yeah, from he it. Did. Yeah. He did. So, so the no, thing that's is, that's the best learning curve for him because um, he's fucking great. Like, also, um, I agree. I agree. I agree. But this is what I'm saying. So I feel what Ace is saying because it was bad. But the thing is, he cut it off early, learned from it, and became amazing. Right. But, but, but. I think Ace is saying that they're consistently. They're, 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 they'll GM and they'll come back and they're still bad. Um. So it leads me to say, think that. Uh, his players don't really. I mean, they're not learning from the experiences. They're not. They're not learning from not the learning, experiences. Not invested, maybe. Also, Ace, you're probably gonna like like um, Harrison said, you learn, and James as well. Actually, you're gonna probably have to like teach them a few things, maybe in a convenient area. Maybe but it's also, time to to share share some tips and share what you liked and didn't like. I mean, uh, it's always e- good every, getting every feedback single... at the end of a campaign or even mid because well, Harrison's extremely fucking uh, paranoid. So every session he's like, yeah, was that good? Was that good? And like, all, 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 we're going nuts. We're always, time, like. we're always saying, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's I thought good. you, you uh, no, but yes, I, it, it may not sound it on this podcast, but I am, I am really, I don't know what you call it, was it? Not confident. Yeah. But the thing is, is, um, well, I do try hard at least, but, but the, yeah. So the point is, it's good to, it's good to ask for feedback, uh, even at every session. And it's so, good. It's also good to give, give it. Yeah. Because and if there's genuine stuff, like um, we gave uh, one of our friends who ran us a, uh, something from a book, and we gave him a tip saying, one of your best sessions are one where you made it up on the spot. So yeah, do that's more what I'm that. talking about, positive mm-hmm. reinforcement, isn't it? Yeah. Instead of instead of saying what you don't like, really talk out the bits you liked, yeah. and 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 tell tell them how how much you love. I really it. like that bit. You know what you could do to support it? They'll like notice overshadowing the shit bit, saying what you could do to support it is this thing that I do because you know they will notice that you haven't mentioned the other bit but they're unlikely they're less likely to be offended because you're just going to go that bit was fucking awesome there is yeah. like times in probably in your life where that's not going to happen like if you play one of Guy McDonald's games for example or no that's it yeah well you have listen obviously that's going to be a problem if you have literally nothing positive to say and uh, you know that campaign you just mentioned was kind of similar it was most of the games there was not really anything to say was it not next one someone else's um because next one did have good bits but the yeah. the uh yeah my I god thought, yeah the story had a lot but there's just uh, i think it was yeah bogged down a bit of setup and and uh, but the, the, the misunderstanding of the technical side of the system the let me just check the rules stuff man whoa it's so funny and nick nick admits to this himself but and for those that don't know he's a previous host on this show a friend of ours and he he um he will bookmark everything in the book that he thinks you might need to the point where do you know those little sticky yeah. notes that you can put yeah. he's just, it looks like his book's got hair because it's got so many of them and then but I'll tell you what that prep was, was great but he just didn't know how to refer to it quick quickly yeah. and he would get so flustered and, he, and he'd and he always say it'd be like, after the game he'd be like, so lads. So I was and, and even he said it on this podcast so if I'm trying to find something during a game I'm never going to fucking find it that's my Nick impression. Um, but if it went, but if I was doing it outside, I can't fucking do. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he got flustered, and it's like, yeah. But everyone needs to start somewhere. I think the positive reinforcement thing is the way to go, isn't it? Mm. Really. Um, what, what do you guys make of um, his thing about uh, just uh, tracking hits, not HP? I feel like oh, it's no. uh, Sean hates it because he's by the book. I no. feel like it's good to use for situations. I wouldn't use it all the time. For yeah. quick fights, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Why not just have ke- and all yeah. get killed in one hit? Yeah, if it's a random encounter, I mean, no, that's fine. Depending on what it is, a hit hit count is is a really good option. I mean, Savage Worlds that's kind of solves fine. it because it's got it's got wounds and most matter, really. most goons will die in one hit. And I, I mean, think that's a really good way to do encounters. It's debatable, isn't it? But that's uh, what's debatable. No, James said that's a hit counter, isn't it? It, it, it is essentially well, okay. to, it's like it's like how much above a criteria a requirement. Requirement. Yeah. yeah but if oh, you, and that's, if you get if you get a hit in that wounds them they die so yeah, it you is. know it's, it's it's similar I mean it's not quite the same as just every time you beat their AC they take one damage but I know people that hate this but his players don't know that that's what he's doing so oh ace man I don't know. Is it bad? Because they don't know. They they're all rolling and they're going mental when they get a nice big hit on a monster because they're rolling high damage. But they just don't know. Don't know. Uh, yeah, spit. No, 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 that's fine. Situational. I feel, I fully support it. I think it's acceptable. But if you're using it all the time, maybe don't. 
No, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. why not? Definitely, if there was a foe that was like one hit kill because it got one HP, now, let that play out. I did hear it on another podcast called Saving the Game, which doesn't run anymore, but it's really fucking good. It's a Christian RPG podcast, of all things, but it's actually really fucking good. One of the hosts was saying that she... Um, the the monsters don't have HP. She doesn't even track hits. Like they'll do, they'll be doing the hits, but when the monster dies, it's plot based. So if you're that, playing D and D, it will, it will, the monster's gonna die when it seems dramatically good to do so. So, so it'll be like everyone will be hitting it. Everyone will be hitting it for a good like twenty minute period. Someone gets a crit. Someone gets a crit. That's when the monster's gonna die. So but she doesn't tell them. That's what she's doing. We'll She'll just say. <gasps> Wow, you got a crit. Oh my god, you rolled like damage. Sorry. It dies. So we're just... Like, why are they not... Why... What's the point of playing a game, then? No, but that... Um, I, I, I get where she's coming from. But again, I think that's situational. Maybe you can do that at a con game. Yeah, it's very... But right. I don't think you could... You should do it in a fully but also, campaign. You've, you're at maybe the point you could where do it if you run it for kids or something. If, that, that's fine. Yes. No, there's also another situation where you can use that. that and it's only one specific situation. Apart from those two that you mentioned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so why did I say one at the beginning of that? So but, three specific um, situations. So uh, sometimes you're going to have to gauge boredom, not boredom, but like sometimes if you If the might fight's dragging on. on. Yeah, if the fight drags or if you feel like it might drag in the future. I'm almost certain Sean's never done this. But I'm also saying that you and I have probably done it. But that where where you know a fight's yeah. dragging on, you've given your monster way too many hit points, you just halve it on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's done that. Yeah, because yeah, you, 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 you get did it in to, Solomon Kane, I remember. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for example, the monster you're fighting at the moment in our campaign has 200 hit points. Might have been too many, but good luck. Yeah, I definitely did chewed up some of my uh, combat ratings on purpose. I was like, that's too OP, but it makes sense because you should be able to no. defeat it. Yeah. But the current caliber of everyone is a bit of shit so I turned them down yeah that's, oh, that's, yeah, you, that's a good point no, no everyone does it's, it's, it's like not not where not to where you're going I want them to succeed this encounter like you still want it to be a challenge yeah. but sometimes you make an encounter that's way too fucking challenging and you go you, you, the, yeah, it, you read it a, the round book. plays out yeah. and you're like you're like yeah the book's telling me this should be a decent normal balanced encounter but you and I hate balanced encounter sorry but like a, an, a good challenging encounter but you look um, but then when you start playing out you're like oh fuck this is ridiculous and maybe you just won't use one of the monster's abilities or you halve their HP or you'll lower their AC by one or whatever yeah, just because you, you because it's like everything looks good on paper but on balance when you get it to the game you're like no nah, I don't know yeah because the moment you're play testing is when you're actually running it for the people exactly so so people change tiny details on the fly all the time it's not trying to go it's, it's more just correcting yourself so, I so like ultimately I, uh, w- is it alright then Cause to change change the entire details to where they just die when the GM yeah. says they do in those specific situations that we listed yeah yeah alright fair enough with, uh, definitely, if you're playing with children, uh, which play uh, you're ro- role playing games with children, I would not like. Well, I have, just to be clear, actually, like you have. What? Well, yeah. D- d- oh, yeah. You d- he did it. He did it for his exes. Oh, I did do that as well. I was I was referring to James's daughter, but you haven't you haven't GM'd for Layla. I've played with. Like I've played with. She's been a player, and Sean's been a player. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Yep. Yeah. But I also did that as well. But that, that because of her presence there, that episode actually had quite a different flavour as well, and it was really good. Mm. She was younger yeah, at the time. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. That was a good podcast. Good. Yeah. Well done. Was right. all right. Thank you very much for your questions. Really loved them this time. And I really want to have a piece of toast. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to send your questions in, go to the Discord. The link is in the description. And uh, there's a question submissions thread in there. You can submit them anytime, although people usually do when I ask them. Shall we do an outro? Yeah. Are you guys ready to roll? Do you think it's wrong when people... Or a f- filet mignon, and they say Philip Mingmong. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> no, because I think if you're ordering a fillet, no, because no, no, you know, you know what they say. Do you know what they say about like drill rappers, for example, using certain words like chef and quef, like I quef them up, like things like that. And people say don't say that because that's not proper English, but that's culture. So people that say Philip Mingmong, that is just their culture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but is it also appropriate to order egg fried rice at a Chinese restaurant and say, oh, I would like egg fly lai? If you're Chinese, it is. Ah. If you're any you're other... Just, just like... Have you been doing that to Eugene all this time? All Eugene this time. is a bloke, you know, that runs a Chinese restaurant. Eugene Naka, isn't it? Eugene Naka. <laughs> He's now in jail for tax fraud. <laughs> no, uh, that is not his name. Um, but yeah, so because like some people do say Philip Mingmong. That's the same as going. Like, can I have a can I have a croissant? Croissant. Yeah, I'll say. Croissant. I say croissant, man. Yeah, but but you wouldn't. Because we're not Ming in France, Ming, would you? We're not in France. But it's not. It's not Ming Mong. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's. For, I don't think anyone really says Philip Ming Mong. Why don't you, that say, steak? Why don't you just say steak? <laughs> Give me a fucking steak. Or a filet mignon. Sean, are you the like type? Of, are you the type of oh, person? Yeah. Are you? <laughs> You're the type of person that the when way. they're on holiday in France, they ask for a Coke and a French accent or whatever. Like, say, so, Le Coq. Excuse me, mate, you got any chips? Can I have Le Chips, please? <laughs> Can I have some Le Onion and Le Garlic? Uh, that's <laughs> no, garlic. That's basically. None of that foreign muck. That's basically what my dad used to do, though. Like, Your dad, but not Harrison's. Not my one. Um, well, like, because we're brothers. You, no, but we, we, we're, we're in the same room, so you say our dad. Um, yeah. Yeah. And he, it, to be fair, he wouldn't have ordered chips. It would just be beer and uh, hops, um, extra Hoppy, hops. Own beer, oh please, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he genuinely probably would have said that to me. We he, found a pint glass, held it up, and went, eh, 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 fill it up, <laughs> oi, it's, it's, Jose. It's literally what you <laughs> get. Your fucking arse and gear. Like if you think of terrible British tourists, that that's was him. him. Yeah, that's him. What are we doing? Free right, to rpgpod at gmail.com Email us, us But don't Because we will never respond about I will We're on X We're not we Actually we are on X But just Yeah do follow on there If you want to get updated When new episodes come out cause, That's uh, pretty much all it does That's all it does It's just <laughs> James has set up He's got an algorithm in there It sometimes tweets the word Philip Mingmon We don't know why Doesn't yeah. it exit now? What? Go No, it's still tweeting No, you still say tweet You can't exit oh, I hate what's, it What's Facebook saying now? Yeah, Facebook, you can go in there. Facebook's um, all right. Sometimes but, we update. Um, but do join the Discord, because that's Discord where... Discord gets used mostly right, by Harrison. Yeah, because we... Go, uh, I'm, 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 on I'm never the, on there. I'm on there all the time. We're hanging out. Sean's sometimes on there, uh, where he bizarrely posts... What did you post? Somebody asked for a PDF or something. You gave them a link to, like, a Google... Like, a Word document or something. I didn't. Sometimes I come in and, like, post a funny meme and then leave in it and... But yeah, all the people are on there, and if you want to submit questions, you can go there. Also, 3T RPG Publishing on Drive Through RPG, that fantasy star product is going to be dropping real soon, so you're going to want to get that because it's fucking, it's amazing, and the writing is fucking perfect, and the bloke <laughs> who wrote it is the best in the world. It's so sexy. So yeah. if you can't, if you don't, if you don't buy that, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, you're uh, the type of person that would say Philip Mingmong. I'm, I'm sorry, so late in the game, but. Are you going to have to change all the imagery? That's going to be hard work, isn't it? I intend to change them ever so slightly. Using AI. So, no, I have, uh, yeah, all the imagery that is currently, because I actually have had the book made. Like, it's almost pretty much done. Um, but I've got all placeholder art in there, So um, which I just stole from yeah, the video. Yeah, we knew that. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, it's placeholder. You told gonna... us, like, immediately. My friend's doing some of the artwork, and my really, brother-in-law. Oh, it looks really nice, though. It's it does, yeah. but the artwork's going to be changed. And, uh, yeah, so... But of course that is going to be the case. Why are you even saying this? Because like, I thought you didn't really think about it. Wow. That's cunty. <laughs> that is cunty. I thought you didn't really think about it. It's not like you've ever written any RPG ever in your life. Uh, yeah, no, I but they, the, the thing is, all of those did have stolen artwork in them, so <laughs> fair enough. No, they don't. They actually don't. See, I actually even include the licenses for the images I use. You're a good guy, man. I know. I'm, I'm not like everyone else on Drive to RPG. Anyway, look, this has gone on too long. Let's uh, let's say goodbye. I don't want to say goodbye. Bye. I oh, know. I've got to go back uh, to suck being a bag lonely. of dicks. B i g h. Big. Bye. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I've been Harrison Hunt. I've been James Clark. I've been Sean Hunt. Shut the up. best one. Shut uh, up. I'm the best one. And no, uh, I'm remember, the best one. Uh, no, I'm the best one. But I'm rem- no, I'm the best one. Shut up. And remember that D. 20s are cool, but 20Ds, now that's a good time. I'm the best one.